and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have one, two, three good brothers. Ha 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 ha. We have the we have the we have the man who will who will make any who will make any sort of contract with you for the right price. The handsome devil himself, good brother JT. Yo. We have the man taking over all of your anime under a pair of under a pair of hot blooded sunglasses. Good brother Shades. Yo. And we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadari Enterprises, and the bane of my fucking existence. Good brother Xanatrix. I need oh. guinea. I mean, test pilots for my new R and D division for Mecha. Join today. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, hear, hearing you call Zan the bane of your fucking existence never gets old. <laughs> I right. live to serve. <laughs> uh, still, uh, the, it could it could be worse. I could I could call someone uh, I could call someone uglier than Baron Harkonnen. <laughs> cool. Oh. That's a that's a doom joke. <laughs> <laughs> See, I get classy with my humor sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't sure. happen often, but it happens. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so let's yeah, keep telling yourself that monk. <laughs> so, what's the topic for tonight? I I hap I happen to like Persona. I ha for for a good on my old phone. I had Aria of the Soul as my as my ringtone. Um, and. I've want I've, and because because of my love for it, I've wanted to do something on Persona for a while, and not a while back, I ended up rediscovering the Persona Five Imagining Project, which obviously has nothing to do with Persona Five. This was created long before Persona Five even came out, but it was it was a it was this um this fan speculation concept that involved art, music, and a bunch of other. Th Things to kind of to kind of illustrate a what if scenario, which obviously is something that we do pretty well here. Not to not to put ourselves on a pedestal or anything. <laughs> well, we don't. We're not completely inept. Mm -hmm. We have a bunch of reconstructions. Anybody can go and review at any time to see exactly how good we are at this. Yeah. We have an archive. Mm -hmm. It all, it always makes me laugh to the to to the fact that I that that I can say here in the temple that we have continuity. <laughs> oh no, continuity I'm not like half of fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> but then, but then I rem and I I thought about doing some doing some sort of speculative or some sort of constructive idea with with Persona because just talking about the different Persona games wouldn't. Wouldn't quite fit the style that we've that we've developed here. So, but then I re then then the deluxe fortune and seasons deck for Everway's Silver Anniversary came out, and that and that sparked a bit of inspiration. Now, I do need to give a bit I do need to give a, a bit of background regarding Everway. Now. Full disclosure: I did ba obviously I backed the silver at the silver editions Kickstarter, and I've had Jonathan tweet on the show. But Everway is one of the earliest examples of a story game, as a lot of people understand it in role-playing games. It is very, very influential, especially since it was it's it was it was an early adopter of a card system. In the very early days of Wizards of the Coast, before they acquired um, Dungeons and Dragons, and this particular system doesn't utilizes a deck of cards called the Fortune Deck. This Fortune Deck is not a success or failure thing. In most RPGs, obviously, you declare your action, then you either roll dice, draw cards, or, or what have you, to determine whether you succeed or fail. There is not a success or failure metric with Everway. Instead, what you have is a set is a setup where you draw you draw a card say striking the dragon's tail and that ha that can have a meaning on the forward on the normal version and the reversed version of its interpretation and you t and that is a cue to na to how you're going to narrate the next part of the scene 
so it's, it is it is essentially the purest form of a sto of a story game in that respect. And there's a whole lot of other stuff regarding sphere walking, going across dimensions, and and how and how and how a lot of people have a spark of fate within them. So and given the fact that Persona has had many 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 allusions over the years to the tarot, I figure this I figure that would be a good opportunity to mix the two together in a sense. So tonight's topic, after all of that preamble, is Persona, Fortune, Seasons, and Sphere Walking. Now, obviously, the Persona series needs no introduction. In fact, it is a little bit it is a little bit of a shame that, in some regards, it's kind of superseded the Shin Megami Tensei series. Hopefully, oh. five helps with that. Eclipsed, Com eclipsed is more like what. Yeah, completely <laughs> overtook it. Also, appar apparently, a good way to piss off jazz musicians is to bring up Persona. <laughs> at, le at, least um, at least according to uh, at least according to Jules Conroy. Oh God! Hey, hey Shoji Mega <laughs> Shoji Megaro really is that good. <laughs> oh, oh, he's oh he's real good, and he's especially and him with Lotus Juice is a match made in heaven. Oh yeah, absolutely. But oh, oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's st it is one of those things that's that still get that still gets people p that still gets some jazz musicians po'd that Persona keeps getting brought up. I I'm of the I'm of the option of I'm of the opinion of I understand I understand why some jazz musicians get pissed off about that, but guys. You're looking at it wrong. You have a golden opportunity to introduce a whole new generation to jazz. Take advantage of it. Yeah. Take it and yeah. run with that shit. I mean, yeah. Introduce them to Coltrane and Bill Evans and uh, you know T Monk and you know all those all that all that good shit, man. I or if you want, I or you know, the, I use if you want to say. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I will. I will use one. I will use myself as one example. I use this in order to and th and um and use it to introduce people to um, Hiromi Uehara. Mm -hmm. But so, sorry, sorry to cut off on that front. No, no, nah, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Because um, there, there's a L, L. If you need to use something a little more contemporary, um, even though this is more swing than jazz. The Diablo Swing Orchestra. <laughs> hey, nice. Which, although although I although I would warn them, I would warn anybody listening to to, to them in advance. Some of some of their work can feel like the soundtrack to Tim Burton's Brain on a Bender. <laughs> oh. Uh, but so, <laughs> you mean Wes Craven's Brain then? <laughs> yeah. Well, let me get let me give you a few examples of some of, of some of the track names. Balrog Boogie, How to Organize a Lynch Mob, Wedding March for a Bullet, and Voodoo Mon Amour. Yeah. <laughs> Classy. <laughs> oh. I'm, re I'm reminded of the work of Voltaire. I wouldn't I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if they took some inspiration. So, obviously, anyway. ob so. The theme that we have here is we are going to be using the the themes present in the Everway deck to try and to try and create a a hypothetical um, Persona Six a, a hypothetical Persona Persona Six just using the Everway deck instead of the Tarot. Nothing against the, nothing against the Tarot, but I figured this would be an, an interesting challenge because while the while the while the Fortune and Seasons deck for Everway is inspired by the Tarot, it would be a stretch to compare the two. Just to, just well, with the fortunes alone, um, there are only thir there are only thirty one fortunes in in the main. No, sorry, there are only forty one. Thir sorry, not there are only thirty one major arcana, if I recall correctly. There's twenty one major 21. arcana in, in the Tarot. Yeah, twenty one. Sorry, there are thirty five. Twenty two. Excuse me. There are thirty-five um, fortunes within the fortune deck. Now, granted, there, well, uh, granted, there's only um, there's only ten, there's only ten, only ten cards in each in each suit for the seasons. So it's so you have a smaller you have a smaller amount of minor arcana, but a lot more major arcana in the form of the fortunes. Now, 
obviously going with going with a obviously trying to trying to build a hypothetical Persona Six um, is going to is going to create is going to have a lot of a a lot of variance a very wide net to cast. If you'll forgive me for sounding a little Minnesotan. <laughs> I don't know. Wide net to cast tends to be a proverb from worldwide. Yeah, but yeah, but I'm f yeah, but I'm from a family of fishing maniacs, so some of it slips in. <laughs> but the th and but the so we need so the first thing that we need to decide on is a theme before we even started tonight, and because yep, the Persona 3's theme was fate one could argue one could argue more specifically inevitability or death mm -hmm. or death if you want to get like real literal if you yeah. want to get like more yeah. well, just because, literal it's it's more of just the inevitability of death considering how the the that that game ends memento mori mm -hmm. yeah exactly there you go um remember that you will die yep persona 4's theme is truth yeah, that's that's a pretty strong one on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty, and pretty. Ex and accepting the accepting of the truth, no matter how much discomfort it may bring. Yeah, to that's see. the whole point of the shadows. Is it's the shadows are basically the, the the true self you hide, and if you reject it, they try to take over. Mm -hmm. And seeing the world through lenses, uh, yeah. as well, the seeing the mm -hmm. to, to distort the truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Persona 5's um, theme is freedom, freedom or rebel or rebellion. It's you can I can go either way on that front. Right. I'd lean more towards freedom because of like the whole motif with everything. I mean, the whole the the whole the blue the the velvet room itself is a jail for crying out loud. I think freedom is a pretty strong uh, uh, ideal there. Well. Mm. Spoilers for a game that's only a few years old, but still, it's past our, our particular uh, point. Um, that isn't technically the real Velvet Room, so can you say that it's part of it, the theme? It still ends up becoming the Velvet it, it still ends up holding as the Velvet Room that the entire game, even at the end, so that's kind of hard to call there. That, fa that falsehood, I'd say, I'd say, is a byproduct of one of the other major themes with um, Persona 5, and that is... Gnosticism. Knowledge, yeah, um, knowing or not knowing something. Well, specific, specifically things in in the in the Gnostic faith that um, chief among them being the demiurge, the Yelled person about. who the person who cl the person who claims to be God and act as God but is not. Yeah, because it wouldn't be a JRPG without teenagers using the power of friendship to kill God. In this case, they use the literal power of Satan to kill God, but you're pretty close. <laughs> Hail Satan! <laughs> oh. But when it comes to but so when it comes to our when it comes to our take, we need to have a theme to go on, and the one that we ended up settling with, especially given the kind of escalation that we've seen over the years, is self-determination this could mm. kind of be seen as a sort of counterpoint to three but not really mm -hmm. three as you said was inevitability the, the fate of uh, of a specific end point mm -hmm. uh self-determination is the one side of the of the coin of determinism versus uh versus free will mm -hmm. Self-determination is that deciding factor. If you can self-determine, free will exists, and the determinism of the of the universe that everyone sometimes buys into uh, is broken. Would it be fair? Would it be fair to say if um, three wanted to go with Memento Mori, we're going with Cogito Ergo Sum? Yes. Interesting. I think, therefore, I am definitely Descartes yeah. would establish in this one. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, yeah, definitely. I like. I definitely go with that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, th that one of the big inspirations that it, for do for doing that is a ref is a reflection of the tr of the kind of tribalism that we've seen, and well, one one of the ethos we have we have in the monastery and in Geek Watch is striking back against tribalism. 
This is why we have the mantra of fans, not fandom, which we'll be getting into that in detail this December, so keep an eye on that. <laughs> but the but it but within because of because of how because of the level of interconnectedness, it is very tempting to fall to follow along with a given tribe and do, and and act in the way in the way that the tr the consensus of that tribe um seeks the tyranny of the majority if you will mm -hmm. whereas the pe whereas the pe the and the people who would be persona users in this regard are reflecting the fact that they choose to break away from that for one reason or another Somet sometimes sometimes they're exiles sometimes sometimes they're outcasts sometimes they decide to say f decide to say fuck you I do my own thing I'm gonna do my own thing with blackjack and hookers <laughs> a um a very weeby example of this would be uh, anytime you've seen a princess run off to say fuck this I don't want to be a princess um be all because everybody else says I I am a princess and thus I have to be a princess. Mm -hmm. We've seen that in anime countless times, among other things. But I'm like a lot of other things. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I and in the in that vein, there's always there's always been some there, since three. There's been some sort of gimmick when it comes to summoning a persona, and that's used. And that theme is u that motif has usually been reflected within the themes of that entry. In three, it was the gun-like evokers that you had to point that you had to point to your head and fire. Literally, the imminence of death. Mm -hmm. You're breaking your psyche to let to to let out your persona. Yeah. In breaking breaking the ego to get to the id. Yeah. In four, you had the you had the whole thing of cr of of cr of crushing a card that you see. That and the that and the that and the glasses thing, which isn't a, isn't as strong of, of a reflection of that motif, but it but it is present. Well, the uh, glasses was more of the seeing through the lies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was what uh, JT was referencing to with the lenses and distorting and seeing truth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were the lenses of truth, if you will. Mm -hmm. Har har, we didn't need a Legend of Zelda reference yet, but good job, <laughs> good job. <laughs> uh, got I it out of <laughs> Good job. Mm -hmm. now, and five. Five is tearing off of the mask. In fact, the very first time they tear off the mask, it... Uh, you just needed blood, Ooh. didn't you? <laughs> yeah, had, had, had to make it a gruesome, painful experience, didn't you? Well, now, at least, you know... <laughs> tearing off your... For... Technically, it's in the Mega Ten franchise, so blood... Well, there will There will be blood. <laughs> well, not only that, but the act of bearing oneself to tear off the mask we show everyone else and reveal who we truly are is a painful process at first. Mm -hmm. And it becomes easier as we do it again and again. So it made sense that that symbolism was there in a more literal fashion. Yeah. yeah. Um, incidentally, Ooh, when the... When so, the so smart. When the Persona Challenge came about, I got um, somebody tagged me. Um, I, was, I, was I was tempted to join in it, but I didn't have the... One, I um, I'm not a voice actor, and two, I didn't have the technical know-how in order to edit in order to edit audio to get the distorted voice, so I di so I didn't go through with it. Um, if you if you knew me, you should have asked. I could have helped you with that. It it was also the fact that I ch I tried to come up with a script for how for how I'd handle it because I did because there because there were there were a few there were a few potential um. Individuals like I could I could have I could have utilized, but as I was trying to as I was trying to write a script in order to do it, it just it just wasn't coming out. Um, but <laughs> I but I but this is this is going to sound this is going to sound incredibly lame, but if but if somebody but the um but the but. The choice of pers the choice of persona that I that I was going that I was going to use was um was hu was Huss, i e i e the i e the man who fo who formulated what who formulated what would have what was the precursor to the Protestant movement. Mm -hmm. Um. 
and the, there's there, but that's it. That's a that's a story for an, for another day. Now, there is there is one of there is besides the besides the whole. In our case, we decided to go with um br with literally breaking a chain as as the as the invocation method. So breaking got, your bonds to fate. Mm -hmm. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, that that, but there is one. There is one other. Um, there is one other avenue that we that we didn't that we didn't cover them that we'll be getting to in a moment. The last th the last thing that I, that we decided on. Persona for since three yeah. onwards the ca the cast of Persona has been. Um, high schoolers. I'd, I'd say. Um, I'd say. It's, I'd say they've been high schoolers for the majority of th of the series. Uh, yeah. Persona One. Because apparently deity. Because apparently deity is only enlist an underdeveloped an uh, underdeveloped psyche. You know, adolescents for world saving adventures. It, it all <laughs> has to do with the themes of each one, really. They. Yeah, the I, the I, types I of things that are explored are the thing are the types of struggles that developing humans go through mm -hmm. which, whereas which completely makes sense yeah. whereas with self-determination you've already gone through those types of struggles you know the the moral basis of your character how to properly use the tools you have or improperly use the tools you have to mm -hmm. judge and uh measure the world now you have to find your place within it as a 20 something year old uh so our cast being a little older makes more sense mm -hmm. sounds good to me yeah. i think I've, I've, I've talked with other friends about this and everybody agrees that the persona series should graduate to university <laughs> or, or something like that mm -hmm. now the now when it comes to when it comes to the person when it comes to our take and and um just just for just for the sake of a, of a bit of reference, so that so that we're not flying blind when we when we end up creating our cast, um, um, so it's not going to be the be it's not going to be the best name generator for for us, but um, it but it's been useful for me in the past. So we're so I'm using I sent you guys a link in the um in the server. Oh no. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's good. Like I. It's getting. It's going to be. It's going to be bad. But true. And it, as tempting as it would be to set to set Persona in the states, um, we really can't. No, uh, not really. I <laughs> Persona it, has a an interesting. Oh. How shall I say? Uh, Relationship. Zeitgeist almost zeitgeist. within within the Japanese psyche. Which, of course, makes the fact that it's called Persona and has so many uh, uh, Jungian methods and uh, ideals in it even more damning. <laughs> well, I like oh, I, I consider I consider that a consequence of of something that you you see a lot with um with J with Japanese popular culture. That being mixing. Um, when I had sh when I had Shades do th do that guest do that guest um segment. For the anime five E review, this was kind of touched upon. How a lot of the examples that sh that you had given shades were a case of fantasy and X. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm vast I'm vastly I'm vastly simplif I'm vastly simplifying in that regard. But that w that was when there was the challenge of trying to figure out what is anime fantasy. <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I had just seen what <laughs> Zen had said. He opens the link, and the first name that he sees generated is I think is is Ban Yoshi. Yep, Ban I Yoshi. It'll probably be pronounced as Ban Yoshi. Ban Yoshi. I know, but still, but still, Yoshi. the me the memes will flow. Bon just Yoshi, like the spice must it. flow. <laughs> oh, but but um. With all, with all that in, with all that in mind, going going with a going going with, I think before I think before we establish any of the characters we're gonna we're going to utilize, we should establish the the 
world that we're that we're utilizing as well as the as well as the effect as well as the effects they're in um now if you listen close in the distance you can hear somebody say what about Tr why didn't you bring up the themes of trinity soul we don't talk about that anime we do not talk about trinity soul <sighs> and it's also for the what same is reason a trinity I soul what's well, a paladin <laughs> but that's also for the same reason I didn't bring up the first three Persona games. The um, Revelations, Innocent Sin, and, and Eternal Punishment. Largely because um, those, those, are, those are a little bit too close to... to, to a bit closer to the um, Mega Ten approach rather than, rather than the approach that happened with... Th three onward is essentially a, essentially a soft reboot for Persona. If you if you look at if you look at how the early Persona games play, they're not too far removed from how a prime Shin Megami Tensei game would play, just without the post-apocalypse stuff. Or for for that matter, it play it plays similar to some of the other um other Mega Ten spin-offs, like say, um, Devil Summoner. I can't talk, I can't comment on if because I haven't seen I haven't seen too much of that. But it, but three onwards kind of established Persona as its own separate identity, which is why I focused on those th on three, four, and five for this project, and not focused on Q because um, I don't feel like it. Well, Q's more a spinoff game anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's more of a spinoff. I mean, if I if I bring in the spinoffs, then I got to bring in all the spinoffs, which means I have to bring in Dancing All Night, and that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good rhythm game, though. Oh, it is. Grant, granted, my gold standard for rhythm games is still is still Oendon, but um, that's a high bar to cross. I mean, yeah, I think Os is a is a pretty high bar to cross for everybody. Hi, mm hi. -hmm. So, I think I do think that, I do think that with when establishing when estab when establishing um the set the setting. Um, in a lot of case, in a lot of cases, it's e it's either been not specific what part of Japan it is, or it's in a it's in a made up city that's supposed to be on in the countryside, as in the as was the case with four. Um, I'm th okay. Th okay, three was three was on this kind of false island approach, but that's a whole other matter. The point is, um, it's all it's always been kind of ambiguous where it's take where a well, game entry is taking place. Except for Persona Five, because that's literally in the middle of fucking Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I, I am. But given the fact that we that we estab we established the self determination thing, I am I am honest. I'm honestly. Th there are a couple places I'm con I'm considering. Um, I was gonna sit a Rapongi, but if we did that, this would be this would this would be way too adult. <laughs> Rapongi? <laughs> uh you mean you mean Persona 4 Red Light District, got it. <laughs> no, no, but all the, the, all, what happens all, in Rapongi stays in Rapongi. <laughs> I didn't know Las Vegas had given that you know, motto to them. That's that's been a that's been a thing for years. I that's know. Been a thing for years. But there were a there were a couple other possibilities I, I was thinking of. Um one of them was the Akihabara district in the either Akihabara or um or Shibuya. Um mm -hmm. Shibuya is a little yeah. bit too, too if I am not I decided that Shibuya might not be the best to go with because um then I'm, then I'm going to end up thinking of Twewi a bit too much. Twewi's kind of got the uh stamp on that. <laughs> yeah, Shibuya's yeah. kind of kind of all about that. By the way, uh, going back to the name thing for a second, because I, d I decided to take a different approach to uh, fi get, coming up with a name. Mm -hmm. Given the themes we're working with, I actually looked up the na looked up the meanings of certain Japanese names, and I think I may have found a combination that works. Okay. Amiko Sora. Roughly translated, you could either do it the Foolish Void or the Foolish Heaven. Ooh. Um, could you could you write th could you write that in chat so I can copy paste it onto my notes? Absolutely, I actually already have it right here for you. Mm -hmm. Oop, and just ignore that. Yeah, yeah, I can I can part. ignore that I can ignore that part. I'm get I'm gonna be keep I'm gonna be keeping that in. We'll um we'll dis we'll discuss we'll discuss um 
his or her default persona because much like much uh, much like in the previous games um actually um the ca the character name technically technically is whatever is whatever the player wants but we have to go with so we have to go with a canon canon name at the end of the day um, yeah, it, considering it, that both the both the other two, the both Persona Four and Fives, their animations had to come up with a name character. So Persona Four, you've got Yunarakami. Yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think we have to have a default name. Yeah. Um, at well, the same, I do want to ask one question. Would you? I think Zan, I think Zan was going to say. Well, so. go ahead. no, I, I'm good. It's go ahead. Um, would you have? I I am debating about whether or not we whether or not the. Um, whether or not we'd go with the approach that um, Persona 3 Fez and Persona 4 Golden did with their, with their protagonist, i.e. can choose the male version or the female version. I don't see why that that why that would be an issue. Um, the name that that, uh, that Shades gave mm -hmm. is a pretty gender-neutral one, so it can work for either male or female. Sora right. Kun, Sora Chan, either way. Mm -hmm. it usually depends on the kanji used. Yeah. I honestly, I honestly would. Uh, I'll just, I'll just be just completely honest. I actually wouldn't mind a female, a female protagonist. I think, I, I just think, I just think it would just be a nice change of pace. That's all. Oh, uh, yeah. I. It's one of those. This is one of those cases where, um, where I'm giving people the, ch where I'm giving people the choice on the matter. Um, but w especially, especially since, for at the end of the day, the character is meant to be an ambiguous tabula rasa, blank slate. Um, mm -hmm. but I'd, but I'm, str but given, given how, um, given how I do want to, I, I do want to have social media as a major, um, part, as a major part, given the whole, um, given the whole tribal thing that I mentioned as an inspiration, I am strongly, I'm strongly leaning towards Akihabara. Hmm. I mean, Akihabara does have a lot of, uh, a lot of different, nerd areas from maid cafes to gaming parlors ev everything in between mm -hmm. um and but having an akihabara war all of a sudden i am taken all the way back flashback to uh akiba strip i was just thinking the same damn thing i was just thinking the same damn thing fucking akiba strip man i'm just like oh Flashback. <laughs> I've, watch, I've um, watched the anime of that, by the way. Not bad. The anime is not bad. I still prefer I, the video games. I'm tempted well, to wa to watch it as like a as a as like a stupid turn off your brain watch. <laughs> it, it is. It is a it is a popcorn anime. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm tempted. <laughs> but uh, the <sighs> Akihabara would be up. Wouldn't it? It should not be the only place involved. While there are large swaths of different types of nerdism, the nerds in Akihabara tend to get along pretty well. The small tribalistic spats, I guess you'd call them, are more good-natured banter from what we mm -hmm. see. And it's usually, the maid at this maid cafe is the best. No, this maid is the best. No, this cat girl is cuter than both. You're both wrong. Okay, here, here's, a, here's a counter proposal. If only Akiha the rest of the world could be. If only the rest of the world could be as civil as that, <laughs> um, they they could learn from the example. <laughs> Akihabara is our hub. Okay. Hub. And much in the same way that you go that you go between di that you go between different hu different hubs in the in the um in the mainline games, mm -hmm. Akiha. But there's always one that you fall back on, and in in our case, that's going to be Akihabara. Okay. Um. So now we're now we're a bunch of uh, mid twenty salaries people who are actually secretly otaku. Got it. Now it's Wotakoi all of a sudden. <laughs> oh, uh, and I love Wotakoi. <laughs> um, yes, yes. <laughs> but um, some of the other dis. But um, besides Sh besides Shibuya, what would be what would be some other districts that we could use as that we could use as um, that we could use as well spokes? If we're going to. Uh, Shinjuku. Uh, um, we, should, we should send them somewhere out into the country. Uh, is there like a? Well, I think one of the places we should go out to it, it eventually, as uh, the the band get together and slash probably some place owned by whoever we get from Ropongi, because that should be a place they go and get one of their friends. I I, I would agree. Um, um 
if you want, if you, I was gonna say when you mentioned when you mentioned going some going so, going someplace a bit a bit more out there, I was thinking, what should we should we have should should we have should we have them go to Yo should we have them go to Yokohama? No, that's a bit too out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> I am, um, I'm also thinking that we should send them to. Which ward was it? It was either... Uh, we, can, we can send them to more expensive wards. These are university students. They have money. Yeah, they yeah. have money. So. But, I mean, just to get the flavors of Tokyo, um, Arakawa ward is uh, one with some of the most most famous parks and shrines. Mm -hmm. um, uh, which, which one did you mean? Uh, Arakawa ward in Arakawa Tokyo. Arakawa under the bridge. Well, <laughs> um... So we we mentioned uh, we mentioned uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at a map. Akihabara is in um is in Chio is in Chiyodaku. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that can I think that can be our hub. Yeah. We should send them to Nagoya. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're looking at Arakawaku. Um, is, uh, okay. hi, hi, hi. Mm. is the ward that uh, uh, in Tokyo that yeah. I was thinking of. Um so the 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 um the other the other the other districts that are there are there's a good set of districts that's ar that's around that um bunkyo Bunkyo-Q. bunkyo Q is a pretty good place too um um shinjuku ku Which, of course, which has Shin which has Shinjuku, of course, and also has Kabukicho. Yep. Um, um, Minato-ku. Yep. Uh, and Chu and Chuoku, which has um, Ginza. Yeah. And uh, Arakawaku is just to uh, the north. East of Bunkyoku. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, keep in keep in mind again; these are ver university students. There is more freedom for the, They have more. There are they have more access to other places. <laughs> yeah, i i wanted I wanted to go with five major air, major areas to not to not because I didn't want. I fig I figure we can I figure we can have a somewhat larger map given given the age difference, but we can't. Ha but having but I don't want to have a um a Todd Coward level map here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And yes, I'm I'm before anyone asks. Yes, I am fully aware that my pronunciation sucks. Um, if if you're offended by that, leave a comment down below, but leave it in Japanese at with it with with in um katakana so I can't read it. <laughs> wow! Dude. I say this. I I've said the same thing to the people who bitch at me about my pronunciation of ch of Chinese. <laughs> I say, le if you have an issue with my Chinese, if if you have an issue with my Chinese pronunciation, whenever I cover a Wuxia game, leave a comment down below. But leave it in Chi Leave it in uh, Mandarin so I can't read it. Mandarin is the spoken version. It's still all just simplified or, or traditional Chinese. Mm -hmm. Mandarin is just a spoken dialect. Yeah. Well, either way, either way, um, and anyway, either way, focusing on pronunci, either way, focusing on pr on my pronunciation. Yeah, we we, we apologize. We apologize up front. We are a bunch of dumb Westerners. We can only do so. We're, we're doing our best. We we assure you. Yeah, I, I, even even me as the anime guy can only can can make mistakes on that very often. I've been I've done it many a times. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think what's really interesting is that um. Chioda, the ward or where Akihabara is located, mm -hmm. also has the Imperial Palace. <laughs> Which we can... Moth dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> um, One of so... our people could be a civil servant that works for for uh, directly for the Imperial part of the government. Yeah, that'd be good. You know, now thinking about it, if we're if you know if we're if we're making a full on Persona game, why not visit some past prefectures from the past games and maybe run into some old characters? You know. Persona Four did that with stopping by the school from Persona Three. I could I could see that I could see that as an as an extra the way the way um the way there's the way optional dungeons are used in um a tri ace game. 
<laughs> with tri ace level bosses too. Nice oh, job, oh. monk. Oh gee, <laughs> oh. but the other I'd say the other ha I'd say the other factor that we that we need that should be considered is um is the dungeon area now. For a, for a while there's for a while there's been the idea that you that you only go into the you only go into the dungeon at night because it's a very specific dungeon that you go into. In the case of Persona 3, you had Tartarus which could only be accessed during the dark hour, that t that time between between 11:59 and tw and 12 a.m. Um in in, Pers in Persona 4, you had the midnight ch you had the midnight channel obviously. I own and, yeah. in hey, <laughs> and in Persona Five, you had um, mm -hmm. Mementos. Yeah, but Mementos wasn't exactly. Uh, you couldn't only enter at night. It was any time you had the keywords, you could enter at that point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they kind of lightened up on that whole after it, midnight aspect. And, and the dungeons being at night made sense with the uh, time schedule that the main characters were under. They were school. They were school kids. So the only free time they had would be late afternoon at room and through the night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to act to go dungeon crawling. I mean, and let's let's be fair here. If any of our protagonists are gainfully employed, I mean, we probably will have a Hikikomori protagonist within our group somewhere. Mm -hmm. Gotta have one. I mean, that's um, literally, that's literally defying defying destiny and, and shutting yourself away from it. Or it could be accepting a destiny of I'll never be good enough. You never know. Oh, so um, now we're getting somewhere. <sighs> yeah. The 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 reason I, I pointed out that a lot of um, Persona has a lot of Jungian archetypes is specifically because of Five and the mention of Mementos, because M Morgana s literally states that the Mementos and everything in it is the collective unconsciousness of humanity. Mm-hmm. And that each each palace was a, a a very strong id within that collective unconsciousness. Yeah, that that remind, um, I gotta bring up. I'm, that reminds me to bring something up later uh, later on in this uh, in this shit, in this episode. So mm -hmm. I'll get I'll, I'll bring that up later. Uh, but, all right, but the the proposition that I, that I'm considering going with is for one is for one much like the divers project that I never finished. Um. I'm th I'm thinking of go I'm thinking of the of the idea that that the that go that going between the real world and and the and the world of shadows that we haven't named yet is a lot easier for for our for our for our protagonists in this case. It is li it is literally it is literally an instance of of sh of shifting from one plane to the other. And as as much as I as much as I've been dodging it, this is where I I kind of have to bring up Twelly because of, <laughs> because of the whole the whole set the whole sensing the environment to detect where noises are and and try and bait them or chain bait them. You know what I'm talking about, JT? Need some more candy cane. <laughs> mm. And it's in it's in the it's in that. That's the kind of vibe that I'm going with, but I want I want to put one little twist on it. And this this and I'm bring I'm bringing up di I'm bringing up the divers or under nights project because the approach that I I want to go with is that when you when you shift when you shift into that world of the shadows you are shifting into um the the closest le the the closest layer to the to the top think of think of it like this the normal world is this is the is the top is the top of the ocean. You are diving into deeper and deeper layers within within this hypothetical world. Actually, want to propose a counter offer? Okay, what do you got? Um, because the the diving into deeper and deeper layers uh, mirrors the dive into the collective unconscious. Mm -hmm. Um. Due to the fact that we have gone to the point of making this a a theme about self determining Oh no. We've lost him. Oh shit. Oh shit, <laughs> oh, shit. he fell Aaron. off. <laughs> he do he, he went too, too deep. deep. <laughs> he went too he deep. Do <laughs> he <do> <laughs> 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 
Oh, oh. hold on. I gotta hit the button now. I gotta hit the button for this, because, yeah. Let's see, where is it? I know this is the right... Yeah, we went a little too deep. Yeah, <laughs> I've been trying to avoid the Inception the inception thing, but... Yeah, it definitely applies, what what with the whole layer within a layer within a, within a layer. Um, yeah. Okay, boy. I mean, I think it's we could do something similar to that. But instead of it just being uh, diving too deep, uh, diving too deep, too many layers in, have it be that the deeper you go, the harder it is for you to re remain yourself. Unle unless you, unless you have, unless you have a certain amount of mental fortitude, which I can, I can which go is... with. The yeah, the... it. Sorry, go ahead. the reason I the reason I went with di with diving is because is because I am I am fascinating but I am fascinated by the technology of deep sea diving and the first first off the fact that if you want if you want some good monsters for your horror story just look at just look at deep just look at um any wildlife that's below well what what some people call the tw the twilight zone in the ocean i.e. the point where the point where light can't reach. Yeah, there's some freaky looking shit down there. Yeah, oh, I've seen damn, I've seen photos. Mm -hmm. uh, damn, nature, you scary. <laughs> but there's <laughs> there's also the fact that and and submarine and anyone who's operated a submarine knows this. The deeper you go, the more pressure you have to deal with. And if you go, if you end up going too deep and you're not properly reinforced, you will get crushed. Like yeah, a, like an aluminum can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think you and I are on the same wavelength with that, which I think is which is definitely a good metaphor for what we're dealing with. And I think mm -hmm. that's why I say, you know, the deeper you go, if you're not mentally prepared, if you don't have the mental fortifications, you will lose yourself in the you know and be crushed under the weight of what people of the, the perception people have of you. Yeah, and in gameplay terms, this means that the de the deeper you go, the deeper you go, the stronger shadows are are there. The 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 bigger the, the bigger the reward, but ag but again, <laughs> the the the, stro the shadows are much stronger, and if you and if you're not prepared, it's like you're going into a region under leveled. And this yeah, and this and this option is available from the from the start, but you know again, it's all up to the for your fortitude and your battle ability or whatever like that. Yeah, great I'd, high risk high return. I'd also I'd also say that we that um. You know how you know you remember how in three, if you spent too much time in tar in Tartarus, um, death would show up. The Reaper. I'm think I'm thinking of something similar to that of of the of, um, of the of some sort of some sort of some sort of collective mob or some or something like that, that shows that get that um you end up getting its attention the long the longer you, the longer you're in a deeper area. Possible. Well, it's Persona. We have to have the Reaper. Mm -hmm. Every game, every game has to have the Reaper. So yeah. it, we, yeah. it just, it's just the Reaper. It's just the Reaper, yeah. anyways. You, you can get but, strong enough to the point where you can fight that, fight this collective mob, because that's one thing you can do. Like I know Persona Five, you can fight that their their version of the Reaper mm -hmm. to take uh, it once you get strong enough. But it's one of those things like you have to. It's near. You're near end game by the time you're able to take this thing on. Yeah. The trick is to fight it during flu season. That's th then it's status. Then it's status afflicted. Mm -hmm. But the uh, and hang, hang on, I see, I see, I see Zan in the in the active thing. Um, let me. Um, could one of you could? Well, we need we need to tag him. I mean, he should know, he should know how to get back here. What's he doing? Maybe he's trying to make sure everything's working properly this time. Yeah, because that came out of nowhere. I, I mm -hmm. think something happened to his internet or something. It, yeah, it, could, just, it could just be freaking Discord. Uh, hey, was Discord? Ah, uh, I texted a uh, monk to let him know that Discord on both my phone and my computer just it went into that updating cycle thing where it says it's mm -hmm. updating. There was no update. Oh, that bullshit! Oh, oh. dude, I'm and calling oh, bullshit, woman oh. lady. I, and it happened on my phone too. It just said connecting and updating. Damn! I didn't that, even know Discord could do that on mobile. That's fucking weird. Yeah, but I still had internet, so I was in the middle of my of my proposition when everything fell. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? What was your counter offer? So the 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 counter offer is 
uh, because the collective unconsciousness is the place where people commonly accept fate hmm. and accept the standards and and practices that they're given, uh, diving into it does not seem productive to fighting it. You'll never get to someone's id that way. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking that in this case, since we are fighting fate, we're now going beyond humanity itself. Mm -hmm. Fate is an ephemeral concept outside of humans. Rather than diving downward, shouldn't we climb upward? Does this mean hmm. that does this mean that we're going that we'd be going up the? Oh, oh God! I can't believe I'm going to say this. Don't say it. He's going to uh, say it. He's going to say it. Stairway <laughs> to heaven. <laughs> no stairway denied. denied. Yes, the stairway to heaven, uh, or in this case, uh, the stairway away from the shackles of fate. Much the same. The stairway to enlightenment, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. a way out of the cycle of samsara that the collective unconsciousness and fate draws people into. You know, when I was in the uh, when I was into that kind of stuff, um, I once read a, uh, an, a an entire essay about the metaphysical and uh, psycho spiritual uh, interpretation of Led Zeppelin's "Stairway to Heaven," <laughs> and uh, it gets really detailed, and it it's actually really really good if you look at it. You know, if you keep it in the realm of fiction. Mm -hmm. But I'm just like, you know what? This could totally. I'm I'm, I'm suddenly reminded of that. Uh, with what we've uh, with what you're proposing here and uh, i can say as someone who has read and remembers that uh particular essay yeah it could totally work and so it, in this case it would be uh rather than the surface of the ocean it's the it's the ground you're, you're standing on but still that's layer zero mm. and you're climbing up uh, to get further and further away from fate but that to encounter more and more obstacles because as any good physicist can tell you, escaping the surface of the Earth, not that easy. No, you just need to go 11 miles per second. It's not a big you, deal. You Let's need, do that. You just need 10 million horsepower. To, <laughs> hey, hey, horse, can you get 10 million of your friends together and take us to the moon? 10 million, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's my counter offer because uh, not only does it does it uh, set example for others to pull themselves up from the ground and into enlightenment or whatever we shall call it, um, it also serves as a basis for getting away from the typical expressions of the collective unconsciousness and gives us a little wiggle room to explore the truly weird and unnatural mm -hmm. I, too I can certainly strange and unnatural <laughs> I, I could certainly go with I could certainly go with that the um the, I dig the, it. the, the but I know it would be tempting to make to make that into to make that into some version of of the Tower of Babel or for or for or for for my fellow um character action fans the Temen Negru. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but the approach that I the approach that I'd rather go, that I'd rather go with is tr is treating e treating each quote unquote floor as a theme unto itself, which would make m the most sense when breaking away from fate. Everybody's interpretation of fate is going to be extremely personal. Well, I, my, my, might I propose maybe uh, maybe as a secondary uh, theme with these uh, seven levels because there has there has to be at least seven for mm -hmm. one for each uh, player character that you pick up because mm -hmm. that, that's just the way it works. You get a new character, you, you get a new dungeon, you get a new character. That's how it mm -hmm. works. So you need a minimum of seven, uh, a minimum of seven. But um, what you could also, uh, as this stairway to heaven, you can also, and this I draw, I derive this from the essay. You can also derive that as the um, uh, as the uh, Ayurvedic uh, chakra system. Mm -hmm. The first chakra starts on the earth. The seventh, the the seventh chakra is uh, enlightenment at the top in the at the top in the heavens, mm -hmm. and each one stands for a different level of um, enlightenment and heaven. Yeah, and all and uh, let's not forget uh, Dante's Inferno, uh, par the levels of Paradiso. So there's that too. Um, which instant, which I'd say I'd say that 
the reason why I wanted to go with with each one be, being almost being mm -hmm. almost a almost a map unto itself is so is so you can have it you can have a mix of dungeons and exploration. It's I like I like bringing in things that have both a, that have both narrative weight and mechanical weight. Okay, this okay. would be this would be an example of this. I'd say I'd say a visual example of what I'm going for. Does anyone remember a very early, very, um, very forgotten PS3 game called Folklore? Yep. That's kind of what I'm going with with the with the layers of the Netherworld in that game. Okay. Now. Okay. Yeah. With, I can see that. Now, with that with that in mind, since we ha since we have that kind of thing set up, I think I think this is as I think this is as good a time as any to. To go into go into uh, to go into our motley crew of of fools. Now, we already have we already have the we already have Ameko Sora as the as the use as the use using the usurper fortune. Um, uh, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Um, are we going to just discuss uh, what form the Velvet Room takes in this takes on this episode? Uh, yeah, I for I forgot about that. So. In three, the Velvet mm. Room was a room. In four, well, it, was, it was an ele it was an it was an elevator. In, yeah, in three it was an elevator, where at, where meet where meeting Nix was you get was you getting off the elevator. In four, it was a lim it was a limo. Driving through the fog. Mm. And in, and in five it, in five it was a it was a jail cell. Because of Yaldabaoth's usurpation of Igor and the way that he wanted to stop the Persona users from doing what they were going to do. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, in this in this particular instance, I do th I do think that the way the way I would the way I would present Igor is is him is him viewing him viewing this this. This as a as a curiosity to see it to see if there is is if there is even the possibility of humans escaping fate. Oh, because because Igor and the Velvet Room are very much a part of the collective unconscious, an attempt to at least give assistance to. Well, the, here's my. Go ahead. I Sorry. was going to say give assistance to humanity in a way that helps them to move forward and become better. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, is Philemon present in this game? That's uh, that's actually something I wanted to bring up because we haven't because Philemon has not been seen in years. His spirit lives on in those little blue butterflies you see mm -hmm. at the save points, but that's yeah. it. Yeah, but they haven't really like brought him back as an as an actual character since like a brief cameo in three, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, hardly. M m uh. Yeah, but I I say we need to rectify that. He was he's a great character. He's, we should do something with him. Um, the Imagining Project also also brought back Nyarlathotep in a, in a way, just just confining it into into the body of what it described as a harlot. Um, given the, given that, and given how the early Persona games had had a theme of um, Philemon and Nyarlathotep as as opposites of each other. I'm thinking we call t we call back to well, we call back to that. Essential essentially both sides making a wager. Philemon be Philemon believes that in the that in the right circumstance a human can surpass fate. Narlathotep does not believe that. And the and the the ar the arbiter of this of this little of this little wager between them is Igor. See that? Yeah, that's that's something Igor would do. He's he's basically acting as he is he is still fulfilling his role as assistant, but he's also acting as ju as judge between as judge and arbiter between the two of them. That's so so long so long as so long as this wager is in place, neither of them can make neither of them can make a direct move against each other. Mm -hmm. Well, and if we're being perfectly honest. Uh... I mean, as as part of uh, the constant conflict between uh, Nyarlathotep and, and uh, Philemon, that wager never really went away. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that, that experiment 
slash wager was there all the way back in the first persona. Um, you know, whether whether humans will rise above their nature or be destroyed by themselves, and that's ultimately what their their wager has always been. In this case, you could even say that this this journey to transcend fate. I think that while Igor is acting as the go-between between Philemon and Nyarlathotep, he's the one secretly rooting for the third option. Because Philemon's option is they rise above their selves and become more enlightened beings. Mm-hmm. Nyarlathotep says they destroy themselves. What the protagonists really want is to break the chains to both of these things. In that in that regard, that is a per- that is a perfectly fitting theme for for Shin Megami Tensei because even even going back to the original, there were there were two major factions: the Messianic cult and the Gaia cult. Mm-hmm. Both of them, re- the Messianic cult representing law, the Gaia cult representing chaos. But the the way to get the best ending is to reject both of them. That's 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 pretty much been been a major theme throughout the core pers- um, Megami Tensei games, and I think I think bringing it into into this would be a nice way to um, to t- to tie that little bow. Yeah, I like I I can dig it. I like the idea of the third option, which is kind of what our protect what you know self actualization is is really you know bucking it bucking it either way. Bucking, you know, bucking any system and just doing your own thing. Yeah, especially since um, <clears throat> the the usur- the usurper for- the usurper fortune rep- represents represents void. It is it is an u- it is an ultimate neutrality. It ha- it doesn't ha- it doesn't ha- it has it can it has no meaning or en- or any meaning, and ha- and is associated with all four elements. As as for the as for the shape of the velvet room, uh, I propose since the since we're using the um, alchemic planets, I propose maybe a planetarium or a sky lab. Um, I was gonna I was gonna say either, I was gonna say e- either that or a I was gonna say an alchemical laboratory, but that might be pushing the Igor thing a bit too much. It's a little <laughs> too arcane. Um, yeah. But I, but a pl- but a planeta but a planetarium i'd be, i'd be i'd i'd be a little i'd be certainly cooler with that a, a planetarium where pe- where people are where people are watching the stars and if i if i had the if i had the ability to commission it i'd have i'd have it where the protagonist is watching the stars while while um e- while igor and possibly Mar- possibly margaret um takes a seat next to him or whoever we get as the repre- as as the assistant, it wouldn't be exactly Margaret. Oh, uh, new, new game, new assistant. That bring that brings us to that brings us to Igor's assistant. Uh, we've we've had we've had a decent variety, when, whether it be, whether it be Margaret, whether it be um, I'm trying to remember who it, who it was in who it was in three and four. Actually, yeah, in four okay. in four it was Margaret. In five it was the twins. And yeah. in, and in th- I can't it remember. Yeah, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. who is who is a who is a ball of chaos when you bring her out of the velvet room. (laughs) And you guys remember the whole thing with the fountain, right? (laughs) Tin Lizzie. (sighs) Yeah, throw throw a coin in the fountain for good luck. Then she decides to dump a bag of holdings worth of coins in the thing. (laughs) More luck, more coins, more luck. There you go. I hate to admit it, but but there but there is logic and there is there is logic in what he says. <laughs> so, uh, I think that while this is a planetarium, mm-hmm. I think it should be an older style planetarium with an armillary sphere in it. Yes, I like that too. Yeah, you you know what an armillary sphere is, right, I mean, everybody? Um, yeah, for the yeah, for, it's, yeah, like it's like that thing from it's like that thing from Agra's room in the Dark Crystal. It it is, it is. Here's a here's a desk sized armillary sphere. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd yeah, say, I'd say something like things. that would would work would work even better with the 
when it, com- when it comes to you when it comes to using that for um per- for managing personas yeah yeah you would you would uh look at the cr- the cross references of the stars and the zodiacs and the celestial rings mm-hmm. yeah and you could use that for fusing personas and shit yeah uh, yeah, but when, now we're thinking. But when it comes to, but how do you get? How do you guys visualize this this take when it comes to Igor's assistant? Um, that's kind of the discretion of the character designers, honestly. Well, um, we are they, so um, okay, yeah, okay. we got we kind of kind of have to fill that role for right now. Um, we've we we've I don't I don't know I don't know why, but. I keep I keep having this idea that the the um ap- the appearance the appearance of the the appearance of the appearance of of the assi- of the assistant should should lean a, should lean a little bit more into the um Nadeshko Yamato hmm. Nadeshko you mean yes mm-hmm. well the, hold, the well, ideal on. housewife <laughs> Not, well, hold, well, hold hold on hold on. We're, the, the Velvet Room in this case is a planetarium. Mm-hmm. All previous assistants were attendants to that particular room. The yeah. twins were ja- the twins were jailers. Margaret was a chauffeur. Elizabeth was an elevator attendant. Mm-hmm. So planetarium. Uh, uh, I I I'm well, I, I got nothing. <sighs> oh yeah, this this kind of limits what we can do with this one. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't limit anything. It, in fact, gives us the exact perfect uh, um, solution. Uh, this is a this is a this is a day in the modern era. These are adults who probably do a lot of things with their their fictional loves as well. They 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 all have fiction they like to ingest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the Velvet Room, being a part of the collective unconsciousness, is partly shaped by the thoughts of the people involved with it. Hi, um. I- this is going to sound so weave, it's super weave, but I mean, this is Persona, it's nothing new then. Um, <clears throat> she is dressed as a typical astrologian. And not just like Final Fantasy XIV's astrologian, but the typical idea of somebody who who, who uh, studies astrology. Not astronomy, even though this is a planetarium. Astrology, since that's what we're working with. So we're talking like a new age hippie type or something like that? <laughs> no, we're talking about somebody in long flowing robes covered in stars and shit. Mm-hmm. Oh. I mean, like I, I said, not just the, the stereotypical astrologian from Final Fantasy XIV, but the astrologian uh, from Final Fantasy XIV is pretty stereotypical of astrologians in mythos in general. Oh, uh, like a Hoshihime or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Star Princess. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is that's some that's something I can that's something I can go with. That is I can see waifu material in that. <laughs> I mean I mean, yes, yes, there's plenty of waifu material in some of the astrologian art out there. Um incidentally, not only does this place have the armillary sphere where we're doing all our persona compendium and persona uh fusion, but because it is an old style planetarium it also has one of those giant orreries in it. Uh, nice. Yeah. That, especially since we're still dealing only with the alchemical planets, most mm-hmm. orreries only go up to Neptune. Mm-hmm. So, like, you could you could get you could get this, except on a much much larger scale with more and more planets. Mm-hmm. And then the armillary sphere, um, the armillary sphere looks a lot like the. <laughs> Again, the, the astrologian. This is why I keep going back to the FF14 astrologian because mm-hmm. the armillary sphere looks very much look like the the star globes used as their weapon. Mm-hmm. Um, so it fits that we have an astrologian overseeing the armillary sphere in a room with a giant orrery in it. Nice. Yeah, and when it um when it comes to what would what name for the, for this astrologian th- themed assistant, what would you get? What what sort of name would you get? Would you give her? Well, many of the names given have been biblical in nature. Mm-hmm. Mar- Margaret, Elizabeth, Ophelia. Um, Ophelia might work. Ooh, that's not that's not bad. Um, 
So we've we've got we've got we've got that nailed down. So now that now that we've got the now that we've got the world down, I think I think it's I think it's time we d we do the characters. The cast, the mm -hmm. Scooby Gang, the, the Scooby Gang. So <laughs> let's let's start with let's start with um the the name we already have with Ameko Sora, the who ha who has the wild card, the usurper fortune. Um. You know, it occurs to me. Go ahead. Has has a Hikikomori MC ever been done? Mm. No. And to, to be honest, to be honest, um, I w I the approach that I was con the approach that I was considering, all all, given the, given what we have so far, is someone who someone who is a odd jobs guy. Um, Works too. Doesn't know what what path to take. Think yeah, the, the think red, the red a, think AG from O's. <laughs> I mean, that's 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 I, that's one way to put it. I was a uh, a super part timer. Bite, baito zetai baito. Well, well saikyo baito, strongest Psycho. part timer. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> um, I was <laughs> I was going to be a little more flippant with my answer. Just, Go for it. just a little more. I was going to say, rather than thinking of AG, uh, what about Nobuo Akagi? Because <laughs> does every from a Kyoto Ranger? Yeah, Ikonin Sentai Kyoto oh, Ranger. God yes. damn it, dude! Really, dude? We're, we're in Akiba. He's an odd jobs guy. Doesn't know what to do with his life. That's a that's a little bit too on the nose. I'm go I'm uh, I know, I know, but you you ran right into that one. Face first. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck I love a Kiva Ranger. Oh But They're unofficial. Unofficial comes, unofficial. Unofficially. Unofficially. <laughs> when it comes to when it comes to his or her persona, what what are you what would what do you suppose would be a good um a good a good one to go with? Well, if if we look at the way each initial persona has been up until five, because five bucks the bucks the trends on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, with with three, we have Orpheus, mm -hmm. who, uh, well, we all know why he's famously involved with death. <laughs> uh with with four we have izanagi who saw the unfortunate truth of his wife and well led to the creation of monsters mm -hmm. thank thank you uh thank you izanagi for looking at your wife when she told you not to no means no <clears throat> uh yeah uh, and w w which and which made for a good uh which good made for a good bookend uh, with the game itself, with uh, the last uh, boss being Izanami. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it made a perfect uh, bookend to that. And then, of course, in five, uh, a famous rebel and free person, Arsene Lupin, being the uh, the initial persona for the for Joker, was a uh, kind of on the nose there. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. As Again, as flippantly as I could say, his persona is Descartes. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, too on the nose. Too, too, uh, well, too, too blunt. Need, need, too blunt. Need me more subtle. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, I think something from astrology, maybe. Or something. I was. I was either I was either thinking something from astrology or so, or something something that something that would fit the um the archetype of the of the want of the um want of the wandering of the of the wandering hero. Hmm. Um. You know the 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 classic the classic hero that you see in a lot of a lot of a lot of samurai films or a lot of westerns who. Come, comes into town, solves a problem, and then leaves. So then, would you, if if we want to go super Japanese with it, we could give him a persona called Yojimbo. Honestly, yeah. Honestly, I I don't see a reason not to. 
Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I, I like that. You saw Kyo Jimbo? Oh, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that would be funny. <laughs> especially especially since let's not forget that the that the final book in the Book of Five Rings is the Book of the Void. Yep. Uh, so then why don't we just go up it from Yojimbo to Musashi and be done with it? If that's what we're gonna do. There you go. Um And now I'm reminded of Ghost. <laughs> let's not let's not say we did. Don't, <laughs> let's don't not the, say we didn't. What go. the Patrick the Patrick Swayze movie? No, <laughs> come later, Ghost. <laughs> That'd be nope. nice. Hold hold that thought on Ghost because its day will come. Oh, I Kamen get, Rider Ghost. Excuse me. I get I get yeah. a str- I get a strong feeling we're going to be di- we're going to be diving into that sometime in 2022. Call it a hunch. Hmm. But then we have the su- then we the first then we have our first um protag our first protag setup and that is or not protag our first um. First party member, and that that is going to be a representative of the sun. And there are there are two fortunes that are associated with the sun. The second is the the second the second one the def the defender, and another and the other one is the fool. Now, the def the defender is in the duality tier, and it's. Its normal meaning is safety. Its reversed meaning is peril. Whereas, safety and peril. Whereas the fool, it's in the estates tier, and its meanings are freedom and lack of connection. So... Between the, t- between the two of them, I'm thinking... I'm thinking the... D- <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! No, we're not going with guts. <laughs> oh come on! He's the ultimate wanderer fighting against fate. If I'm gonna go that no! far, I is, if I'm gonna go that far, he's I may as well go with a, Solomon. He's Kane. got a point. <laughs> he's got a point, but I but we can't we can't go with that. <laughs> I know. I'm just. <laughs> you know me, monk. I've got to bane you a little bit. Yeah, I know. Um, he's be been like too nice tonight. He had to, he had to, yeah he had to get his dick level back up. Yeah. It would be like a character in a story rebelling against the one who wrote it. <laughs> um, but between the between the two of them, I'm le- I'm leaning towards the defender because when you think about it, the first uh, the first ally character that you ha- that you have tends to be tends to be a very stalwart ally, the bro character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the bro. Yeah. Um, Yosuke is a fine example of this, actually. Oh yeah, oh, absolutely. Like Ry- Ryuji's cool and all, but when I think bro, I do think Yosuke. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, that's that's a given. And given the given the given given the now given the whole thing with the def, with the defender, um, defender I'm, and its sun arcana right? or sun element, right? Sun it's, planet. Its plant. Its planet is its planet is sun. Its elements are its elements are air and fire. Okay, so defender, but possible peril, sun planet, elements of fire and air. Um, they're placed in society, especially since they're an adult, is bright. Um, and it's closely related to Japanese government because, you know, land of the rising sun. Mm-hmm. Their persona um, is Amaterasu. <laughs> uh, we already... I I, think I I wasn't gonna go with Amaterasu actually. Yeah, I, mean, I was I, I was gonna say something else there. I was okay, gonna, I was I was actually thinking Bishamon. Yeah, Bishamon then definitely. Um, Bishamon works, especially since that's a that's a very aggressive defender in many cases. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they should work with the Japanese uh, federal prosecutory system. So you're you're think you're thinking that you're thinking that our um our son character is a lawyer, a an pro- up and coming a, prosecutor. Yes, a legal a legal assistant. Um, I think he's our Miles Edgeworth. Yes. <laughs> no, 
God <laughs> fucking damn it, I was trying not to go with a Phoenix Wright reference. Oh, but you knew it was right there, and I was going to grasp it with this hand. <laughs> Take that! Oh. But how does a but how does a super part how does a how does the ultimate part timer end up with friends with an up and coming prosecutor? He was doing part time notary work. I w I'm thinking I'm thinking either that or he got or he got in a he got in a bad si or um or so or he or he um he ended up being he ended up being a witness. A witness delivering documents. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's the victim of a crime. Uh, or, maybe he... just, or maybe they just both were in the wrong place at the wrong time and something happened. That can also be it. Mm -hmm. um, the whimsies of fate then. And that's really, really interesting to, go, to that play would, around with. That, yeah. would be, that would be good. So what are you, what are you guys thinking of as far as, as far as a name? Should we... Well, for, first off, as... as for whatever reason, I'm I am think I'm thinking we I'm thinking we go with a female attorney. Don't ask why. I mean that's that's fine. Um, sure. Having having a a, a bro female attorney character is awesome. Because mm -hmm. uh, because for some reason for some reason I'm think I I keep thinking that this particular character has a bit of a um. A bit of a big, a bit of a big sister attitude. Mm -hmm. That would be more in line with her wanting to help out uh, Akino to be protective. Like he, if something happens to him that she wants to keep, you know, keep, uh, keep protecting him with. Mm -hmm. Oh, as tempting it, as tempting as it is to ha to to give her the name Mamoru, that's a little bit too on the nose. Well, also the kanji commonly used for Mamoru make it a more masculine name in the in the first place. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I can I can go th I can go through I can go through the random names the random name generator that we ha that we have. But if any if any of you've got any alternative ideas, I'm o I'm open to suggestion. I'm a uh, I'm currently doing some. Investigation, as it were. Yeah. While while I'm at it, I'm going to I'm going to strike through the usurper and the defender, so that I don't so we don't end up double dipping. Mm hmm. Does anyone smell something burning? Yeah. <laughs> Is it toast? I think it might be toast. Am I having a stroke? <laughs> um. Let's see here. I'm not really too uh, aware of alternate readings of kanji to change these from being too on the nose. So I think we might have to go with something... Something random? Uh, something a little on the nose, but not extremely on the nose. Uh, let me... Let me pull some stuff here. Maybe in the interest of time for this uh, podcast, maybe just, you know, forego names and just put them down as their archetypes for now. Yeah, I can I can go I can go with that since the since um Yeah, we could we could be here all night trying to figure <laughs> out names. Yeah. And it's not even our first language. So mm -hmm. I've I've I I've got one that's a little better. What do you got? Uh, uh, Masa as her family name, and uh, Hikaru as her given name. Hikaru is a very prosperous name to, in general. Um, it would be an indication from her parents that mm -hmm. she's meant for something uh, bright and ostentatious. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the trappings of fate laid around her by those uh, other than herself. Yeah, um, Masa is a 
is a kanji used in a lot of different things. Um, it's used in the kanji for justice. It's used in the kanji for uh, regular or true, depending on which version of true you're looking at. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, when used with the reading masa, it means positive. Mm -hmm. So you can see the 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 hints of what's there, but not everything. Mm -hmm. uh, next, next would be our moon uh, character, uh, and there are there's two there's two there's two potential ones for moon: um, the creator and the priestess. The creator is also in the duality um, tier, and its uh, meanings are either nurture or abandonment, with its elements being earth and water. Whereas the priestess is in the estates tier, and its meanings are understanding mysteries and impracticality, with its elements being earth and water. I think the priestess would probably be the better choice here. Uh, the creator lies... Uh, the, that nurturing is going to conflict a lot with the protectiveness of our, of our guardian character. Um of Hikaru herself. Given the given the fact that the priest that the meaning the um, meaning for priestess is understanding mysteries, this might be a little bit on the nose, but I'm think I'm thinking the priestess is a independent journalist. See that? Mm -hmm. Um, although I don't know if there are a lot of independent journalists in Japanese society mm. anymore. With with the with the advent with the advent of social media, it's very easy for anyone to become an independent journalist. This is true. This is true, um, and she probably has a small to mid mid sized respectable column that gets her enough money to get by. Mm -hmm. um, um, we could, if we if we want, um, it it'd be tempting as hell. But but should we say that her that that her uh, that her journal that her journalist call is the weekly Atashi? Har har har. Or or if I or if we want to go if we want to make this joke even worse, the weekly ore. Har har har. Why not just really mix it all up and call it the weekly Boku? <laughs> make no, everybody make think. <laughs> yes, I hear. I hear someone else sputtering more than I do. <laughs> um, but yeah, some somebody who somebody who it, who is who is who does these uh, who does these on the scene reports about um, people sto people stories and stories and and the like in in and out in and out of the various districts. Mm -hmm. um, I figured this would be a way for. I was tempted. I was tempted to go, to go with detective, but that's a little bit too easy. And I fig I figured this I figured this is a way where we can lean into the whole understanding mysteries without it being too specific. Yeah. Um in this case they became they became a journalist because people because people and people's stories um he finds fascinating. Um Yeah. And when it comes to when it, when it comes to the when it comes to the person the persona, um I honestly, I honestly think that the persona, that the persona should be Parcelsus. Okay. The the al the alchemist. Alchemist, yes, yes. Born von Hohenheim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know where we we, <laughs> we all knew where uh where Full Metal Alchemist got their idea from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um well I was I flipped a coin between that or Nicholas Flamel but that but too easy. Yeah. Too easy and the only thing easier would have been well Alistair Crowley. Yeah, not doing that. Alistair um, Crowley. So the ne when it comes to our Mer when it comes to our Mercury um the two options that we ha that we have are Overlooking the diamond, and the hermit. Now, and I see. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Overlooking the diamond is in the follies tier, and its meanings are failing to see opportunity and recognizing opportunity with an element of air, 
Whereas it's whereas the hermit is in the estates tier, and its meaning it, it its meanings are wisdom and isolation, with its elements being air and water. Mercury interaction, communi communication, and learning. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um. Maybe. Maybe I, in this case, the, this hermit should should be uh, overlooking the diamond because the 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 normal meaning is to fail to see an opportunity. I ha I I have I have a bit of a light bulb. What's that? Our Mercury is a confidence man. Hmm. Okay. I'm still. I'm, I still want to go with um, overlooking the diamond as his, as his as his or her's particular en particular entry. Mm -hmm. But this, but this is somebody who who is who fill, who kind of fills the motif of being of being the of being a silver tongued face man who knows how to talk his way in and out of it of any given situation. So it's Tom Hardy in Inception. Got it. Um, I was actually go <laughs> I was actually go. I was actually going with Laurent from Great Pretender, but that works too. Mm. <laughs> uh. And I, th I actually, I actually think, I actually think this would be a perfect opportunity to have a member of the member of the party who falls into the femme fatale archetype. Realize that means that we've made three female characters in a row, right? Um, no, we ha no, we haven't. The priestess is male. Okay. We've only uh, the priestess is male, and the usurper it the usurper is pick one. Yes, but then the son was female as well. So the son, that was my the, point. The sun is female. The priest, the moon is male, and Merc and Mercury would be female. So. Okay. Oh. Uh, So now, when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the persona of some, of somebody who who would who would be a, who would be a classical trickster in this regard, you know, some somebody who is able who is able to out able to outwit people. Mm -hmm. I'm very tempted to have the to have the choice of persona be Loki. That could work. Um... Notice we're kind of going with the Persona Three uh, strategy with persona with choosing personas, just you know whatever fits, rather than like something more, something more like them thematic. Like Persona Five was like Persona Five, every but every persona was like really thematic. But in this case, we're going with kind of like whatever. We're just pulling it from wherever that fits. Um, well, like that. I, the reason for that is because uh, the 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 Meanings given by the tarot in, in Persona Five are are where you get the differentiation between um, between the people and the theme. Whereas here, because this isn't a tarot deck, it doesn't work the same way. Mm -hmm. the The differentiation occurs earlier than the theme. Okay. So okay. each each persona needs to be unique to the person, but still be someone who helps. To defy fate. Yeah. Um, All right, if guys, we look... I'm gonna go ahead and head out. I'm. I think I've reached my creative limit. I'm done. All right. All right. Okay, Th Shades. I, pre I appreciate you. I appreciate you making the effort, regardless. Uh, you it... guys have a good night. Uh, good night. Good night. Stay frosty. If we look at each of the of the particular um, persona chosen, uh, with. With choosing Musashi for the main character, mm -hmm. Musashi railed against what it meant to be a samurai and the code of the bushi of, of the bushido. Um, he was very counterculture. He was very yes. He was very counter the fate given to the people. Well, the the book of air is is him basically shit talking a lot of a lot of a lot of um a lot of traditional swordsmanship styles of his era. mm Hmm. Oh, there's al there's also the fact that, um, 
Ko that Kojiro Sasaki never never existed. He was an amalgamation of of opponents and basically a basically a for lack of a better term a straw man of everything he didn't like about about samurai culture of the time. Yeah. That <laughs> that is a uh... That is that is Musashi being kind of a dick, but okay. <laughs> um, he was kind of a dick all the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bishamon uh, is one of the seven gods of luck and also one of the four heavenly kings. Um, Actually, now now that I think about it, I think there's one there's one um, there's one entry that I think might fit better than um, Bishamon. Oh yeah, Akala. Okay. Okay. Oh. Akka who I I think I feel like I feel like Akala fit, fits fits better the the idea of a of a guardian. Yeah. Oh, since he since especially since he is Especially since he is referred to as the as the immovable in in his when it's written in Sanskrit. Yes, and uh, on top of that, uh, part of what uh, Akala does is move among uh, the other Buddha because he's the messenger for Vairokana. Mm-hmm. So I'd say all things considered, Akala is a better fit than Bishamon Ten. Yeah, I can see Akala being a better fit. But oh, but over, but overall, because of the fact that we're playing with a different set of rules when it comes to when it comes to the fortune deck compared to the tarot, that that's that very that very precise um, level of meaning that we see in Persona Five doesn't quite work with what we're doing. I'd also like to, uh, just in case you, you aren't too familiar with the name Akala, JT, um, mm -hmm. Fudo Myowo. Hmm, okay. That's what he's called in Japanese. Okay. Yeah, I may, um, I may, as, well I may as well write it in that, in that form, just to keep things consistent. Yeah. He, he's, he's protector of the Imperial Court and nation as a whole when it comes to Japan as well. So, mm -hmm. again, with our Federal prosecutor of the of the Japanese courts. It fits. I suppose. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going with the flow here, guys. Yeah. So next is Venus. Okay. And so the two choices that we have for Venus is sewing stones and the Smith. Now, now before yeah. I do that, I need to I need to strike through um, overlooking the diamond. So, um, so, so sewing st sewing stones has the is in the follies tier has the has the meanings of fruitless labor and ceasing fruitless labor with the elements of earth, whereas, um, whereas the other the other entry is the pe is the peasant, who is in the estates tier and has the motif of simple strength and lack of vision with the elements of air and earth. I think the peasant applies a little better here. Sewing stones is a pretty specific, even though it generalizes by just saying fruitless labor, mm -hmm. it's still a pretty specific idea. Whereas someone who is, who, who has simple strength and a lack of vision, so they're the small man on the ground. They're the guy delivering beer to the bars around the bar district, or they're the guy... Um, Maybe it's someone who dropped dropped out of school after middle school and went out to the rice paddies. Who knows? I'm th I'm think I'm thinking. Go you remember how when we did the when we when we did the um when we did the last shonen experiment, we went with a guy who was an architect. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm thinking we go with we go with somebody who is a con who is a const a um construction worker. It'd be easy for our protagonist to meet him then, since there's a bunch of odd jobs, and uh, one of the odd jobs would be day labor with the construction crew. Mm -hmm. and, I can see uh, that. It, and Venus is the god. And Venus is the goddess of beauty, love, and romance. It should be a very handsome man. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very handsome man 
with rugged good looks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, in this, in our, in our case, Ve the meaning that Venus has is aesthetics, love, and physicality. So, yeah, it all, yeah, it all fits. So I'd, <laughs> I'd say we go, I'd say we go with the, I'd say we go with the peasant, um, whose whose occupation is as a construction worker. Gets hit on by or uh, has a ton of office slaters looking at him on their breaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the rest of the construction crew is like, go oh, pick a wife already. He's like, what are you guys talking about? I'm just, I'm like 24 and I just started working. You really think I can have a family? Oh, they'll pay for you. Go, 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 go mooch off of one of them. Oh, of course. I'd, I'd imagine, I'd imagine that he, that he's not, that he is not from around, he's not from around the area. Yeah, he's yeah. probably got a bit of a of a twang from some other dialect. Um, yeah. If I'm well, if I'm thinking if I'm thinking twang, the first thing that comes to mind is either is either he's he's from way way the fuck up in Hokkaido, or or if possibly I'm... Osaka. I mean, he could be from anywhere in Kansai if you're going to give him a Kansai Ben dialect. Yeah. I because. When I when I think, uh, when I think Naga, Nagoya's got a good Nagoya's got a good accent. Mm -hmm. so he's, yeah, but I it's you end you end up seeing you end up seeing Kansai Ben accents a lot a lot in a lot in anime. So I th I think we can go with that. Yeah, Tokyo Ben and Kansai Ben are the two most used dialects in most fictional media because they're the two most understood. Hi 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 hi. So does that. Now, as far as far as as far as his pers as far as his persona, this this might be a massive ass stretch, but um, I am proposing as his persona, especially sent especially given, especially give sp all things considered. Um, I there are two that I'm thinking. One of them is Captain Nemo. The other is Paul Bunyan. Uh, uh. Uh, you're making me mass crazy two here, two very massive stretches. Like I like I did, I did say it would be a massive stretch. Um, but mm. we, I do. Beyond beyond that, I'm yeah. I was think, I do think that the persona should should represent the whole, the whole ep, the whole everyman hero um archetype. Which is why I wanted to go with with a, with that kind of local legend like like a Paul Bunyan in that regard. Well, then, if you're going to go with an everyman hero who is at the at the heart of of simple work, mm -hmm. uh, Johnny Appleseed would have been even better than Paul Bunyan. But again, that's English folklore, yep. American folklore specifically. Mm -hmm. Um. Let me do a quick check. Zodiac is Taurus, so yeah. Well, Paul Bunyan did have Babe the Blue Ox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul Bunyan is also an is it also you know an an American kaiju. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, should I go with John Henry instead? <laughs> Wait, yes. no, that could that could work. John Henry could work. I think we need to get a little bit more archaic. Hmm. A little bit more archaic. Uh, Robin I mean, Hood? there. No, no, not Robin Hood. I I thought about it, then I was like, no, that's not going to work. No, it's not going to work. I mean, you could go if you if you really wanted to go to the most. Uh, folklore of folklores on the Japanese side, uh, you could go Momotaro. Momotaro I can go with. I like Momotaro. He came from a peach and became le and became a legend. And he was the co and he and he was raised by the common man. He's kinda like super, he's kinda like the Japanese Superman. You know, he get he he's found in a pod. He's raised by farmers. He 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 has superpowers from a young age. He goes out and fulfill and, and fulfills his destiny and defeats a bunch of monsters. It was it was he's, he's Japanese Superman. Yeah. Oh my god! I just figured this out. <laughs> it was tempting to go with Sun Wukong, but Sun Wukong is too chaotic. Sun Wukong is also someone you would see with other uh, other Zo other planets and other um, ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, I can see Momotaro. Yeah. 
the Mar the Mars ent entry that we have. The two options we have are Fearing Shadows and The Smith. So, so, hold on. Fearing, Fearing Shadows. We did say we were going to eventually have a Hikikomori character. <laughs> to be to be quite to be quite honest, um, I am I am le I am leaning f I'm leaning far more towards um towards the Smith. I can see that for productivity uh, and evil effort. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the kind of um kind of person kind of person that the Smith is, um. I look. I look at the. I look at the Smith as someone who is the head of the head of a company. You think that's gonna, be, like, a a federal prosecutor for the Japanese government is one thing. That's somebody that someone may ostensibly run into in their lives simply through mm -hmm. being a witness or a victim of a crime. Yeah, okay. these got to be gra these got to be entry level positions. These are just twenty something starting yeah. out in the working world. They have what to be, you know. They 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 can't be this successful already. Okay, may, in, head of a company might might have been pu might have been pushing things, but do you suppose do you suppose the do you suppose the heir to a do you suppose the heir to a company a la um, Mitsuru would be could be something that we could work with? So you're talking about what the uh, Koreans call a table. That's that's one possibility. The other the other one I was considering is somebody who. Um, through, who through through the connect through the connectedness of the modern world um, was able was able to create a little startup company for themselves, and they could still be a hikikomori while doing that. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the perfect place to put our hikikomori it, to be productive, but still be shut in and away from everything, and pr and present a front of goodness while at the same time hating to go outside. I'd say this would be an, I'd say this would be a good spin on it because a lot of time a lot of times in media the hikikomori has is per, is portrayed as an is portrayed as an as either an uber weeb or or as somebody who isn't going to be all that productive, whereas in this case we have somebody who is very productive. They have they have their own they have their own business, but they do ev they do everything online. Could see that. Um... And so they, they might have their own uh, startup having to do with uh, delivery. Pro probably you maybe, could pro you'd probably have maybe, they have their own they have their own version of say DoorDash or so or something. I was I was about and to say may maybe they started a Japanese version of that yeah. Mm -hmm. And the protagonist works for that or gets a job with them, him somehow or something. Yeah. I don't know. Um. Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I had this weird idea that one of the characters, uh, not obviously we've already decided on like three, but three, but three right now. I don't know. I had this idea that one of them could be like a YouTuber or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> um, I think, or, I think, in, I think we can easily integrate that into our, into our journalist. Yeah. Okay. That, that maybe, maybe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always room for side characters galore and stuff like that. I mean, of course, you, 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 if we wanted to integrate, if that. we wanted to integrate with that uh, with our Smith, um, we could easily have it that 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 said he's he a VTuber. He's a VTuber. <laughs> I knew where you were going with that, Monk. I was like, hmm, it's a VTuber with their own delivery company, but they hate going outside. They <laughs> probably even use a voice changer to be a cute girl online. Um, oh Lord! No, I, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't go with the with the know. voice changer part. In, fa in fact, um, when it co in fact when it comes to the, when it comes to this partic when it comes to this particular character, the they um, the they're at they're they are they are at they're as ambiguous as ambiguous as po as possible. In the ambiguous, but still one way or the other. Yeah, but it's a it's a case of there's an arg there's an argument that could be made e that could be made either way. So so we're gonna have the the typical are you a dude or a chick uh, gags going on then. Yeah, and of of course of course the, of course um our Mars isn't isn't going to isn't going to say isn't going to say either way. Um, 
now when it comes to when it comes to their when it comes to their persona, um, I was thinking of going with Ebi Sue, but that might be a little bit too obvious. Um, Ebi Sue being one of the seven lucky gods, the and is rep and um is associated with hard work. Yeah. Um. Drawing a lot from a Japanese folklore here. Hmm. Well, I mean, they're Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what's you gonna do? Yeah, what's you gonna do? No, um, in this case, uh, I was actually thinking, uh, since they are so productive, and we've given them a card with the name already, why not be Hephaestus? Mmm. God of the Forge, sniff, sniff, smith, smithing and productivity. And um, trapped in the underworld, too. Uh, trapped not just in the underworld, but trapped mostly on, on the planet. I think not even the underworld really wanted him um, mm -hmm. because of his disfigurement mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Hera forced on him. Um, because Hera like, is a bitch. He, was, he, like, he wasn't as beautiful as the other gods, so she's like, get the fuck off Olympus. He's like, but I'm a god. And she's like, get the fuck off Olympus, and kicks him off Olympus, crippling him forever. Bitch. Hera was not a very nice person. But, no, of course, was... neither was Zeus, so... No. Um, I, I think Hephaestus would be a good one here. Um, like simply because of the fact that God of the Forge, God of Productivity, shunned from the world, and shunning the world... Hephaestus didn't like the world either, and when uh, Hephaestus trapped Hera in a throne, uh, he took Aphrodite as his wife as payment to get Hera back out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course, you know, that didn't make Aphrodite any happier, and she had an affair with Ares and with Hermes. And this, Note to this... everyone listening, Grecian lore is fucked right up. This week on The Young and the Olympians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Next, we have Ju we have um, Jupiter, and our options for Jupiter are either striking the dragon's tail, or the s or um, the king. So uh for s for striking the dragon's tail, the the th the meanings are understanding the challenge and recognizing the larger problem. For the king, it's authority and tyranny. Generosity, hope, and judgment. Um, I striking the dragon's tail is a lot harder to translate into a person and their position mm -hmm. because it's a, it sounds like a single instance rather than something that is a process or a state of being. Yeah. Um. I'm I'm leaning more towards the king, and I do I do have as tempting as it would be to have them be have them be associated with with the with the imperial line. The approach that the approach that I'm thinking of is the of um this is somebody who is this this is somebody who is a Busozoku. Um, mm, I can see that. I think. Either a Busuzoku or some or somebody who um, somebody who at one at one point um, was the was the leader of a street gang. Not full not full on yakuza, but ju but just but just a, but just a just a bunch of just a bunch of punks. And in that case, how would uh how would that translate into what he's doing now? Um. Actually, I just I just real I just realized I just realized what would be what would be the what would be a great template to model. <laughs> oh, GTO. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> great teacher Onizuka. That's a yeah. classic. Nice. Um, I would, so I would like saying, one of them to be a teacher. I, I well, think one I mean, of them being a teacher would be nice. Hit, I mean, this would be the perfect... He's, he's, he's giving us the perfect case to do it to. Mm -hmm. Someone who has authority, but not too much. Someone who used to be rambunctious. Um, who is now much more caring and generous than he was prior because he knows what sort of troubles he went through that caused him to join that life in the first place. And how he'd want his students and, and other 
children to avoid that that particular difficulty as well. Um, I'd I'd say uh, I'd say of the of the ones of the ones that are here, um, our Jupiter would be the oldest of the bunch. Yeah, probably like twenty seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Basically, um, the guy, the guy who, the guy who is the, the guy who is the embodiment of somebody who's, who's seen some shit at an, at an age when he shouldn't have. Yeah, what I would say then, um, is that he is a junior high teacher, not not a high school teacher for mm-hmm. sure. Um, because he knows that where he start where he started going wrong was earlier than when he became the head of the gang. It was much earlier than that. It was in his. It was in the, those junior high years. It was in those year, those formative years when you're being told that you have to decide: go to school, don't go to school, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he he's a junior high teacher. Um, I would say that makes him whatever the equivalent is of the government and social studies teacher. Because he's going to teach those kids, hey, yeah, our society isn't perfect, but it's better than nothing, yeah. and stuff like that. Oh, it's ten. I like I like having an Onizuka as a as a party member. I dig it. <laughs> yeah. Um. Although he's he's also he, I see him as also somebody who it is um who even even with his um his teach his teaching methods are. Un, are certainly unorthodox. Unorthodox. Um, Very but unorthodox. He, but but hit but his but he's but because of because of um hit because of his experiences and his force of personality, um his students have a, have a high degree of trust in him. Of yeah. course, they they see that he genuinely cares about their safety, well being, and futures. Mm-hmm. Like Ultraman Seven. <laughs> <laughs> He, he also he also is going to be that guy who when he sees a kid having issues in class or whatever and knows it's probably tied to home life if it's kids who have high expectations put upon them he's going to be like he's he's going to be that guy who says they have expectations because they love you but you know you be sure to seek out your own life mm-hmm they're, they're going to love you no matter what, but right. you you have to do what's good for you. Right. Self actualization. Self yeah. actualization. Yeah. So the la- so the last the last planet that we have is Saturn, and there are two there are two options we have. One is drowning in armor, and the other is the soldier. Oh, we definitely got to have the soldier. <laughs> This is definitely, and this is this would make. Uh, we got how many how many male characters we got so far? Um, we got. We did. We didn't. We didn't track after after a few. We didn't track the. We didn't track the gender thing. I, fi- I figured we. I figured we'd do that once we had once we had the whole cast. Okay. Um, cool. But the soldier the soldiers meanings are duty and blind obedience, and it and its some um, elements are fire and earth. Yeah, and this this is going to be one of the most blatant ones about do you follow your fate or do you fight against it? Mm-hmm. Being obedient to someone makes you more likely to express obedience in general. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> I I definitely think that this soldier should actually be someone who just got out of boot. For the JSDF, this isn't just a, a police person or someone of that of, of that uh, that particular persuasion. This is someone in the Japanese Self Defense Forces, just out of boot, or maybe their 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 um, their posting is nearby. Maybe they're part of the JSDF that stays near the Tokyo Imperial Palace mm-hmm. uh, as as part of you know. Guarding things. Yeah. Um. Also, also, I di- I for I forgot to mention we we didn't we didn't pick we didn't pick a persona for, uh, for our Jupiter. 
Oh, for our Jupiter? Mm-hmm. Whoops. Um, I mean... Uh, now, this is this is one where I'm going to be a bit on the nose and a bit inspired. Um, I, I'm going to say uh, Tripitaka, the, the Buddhist priest from Journey to the West. Who was teaching those pop those problem students of his those three demons how to follow the proper Buddhist way? Yeah, let me. Could you could you type could you type in? Yeah. Um. He he. I mean, I could give you his his actual name, and that's what I'll give you. Yeah. It's it's a. Uh... Xuan Zeng. Xuanzang it is, yes. At least it's the closest our dumb American mouths are gonna get to it. <laughs> once again once again if once again if you're mad if you're mad about my pronunciation, leave a comment in Chinese. Yeah. That's the full Chinese name for him. Mm -hmm. Um And even then I think that's just the name of the person he was actually based off of for the yeah. story. Mm -hmm. But the but when it comes now when it comes to the persona of our Saturn, what do you what are you thinking of going with? Um You know, we haven't drawn on it at all yet for this. Um so I am thinking That we go with Set, mm. as in the Egyptian god of war and chaos. Mm -hmm. I can I can go with that because we hadn't drawn on anything Egyptian. Had drawn a little heavily on Japanese, got some some Greece and and uh, and some uh, like one Norse in there. So mm. you know. As we always say, variety, spice of life. Yep. And gi given given some given some of the given given some of the given some of the depictions, it's certainly go it's certainly going to work. Mm -hmm. um, so, with the, so as as we've we've kind of had it, um, our us our usurper is is can be male or female. The defender is female. Mm -hmm. um, the priestess is male. Mm -hmm. Overlooking the diamond is female. Yep. Um, I think we decide that the peasant is male because of the because of the whole bachelor because of the whole um, rugged good looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Venus. Um, the smith. Is it, I think I think we decided that the Smith is. I'm going to I'm going to write X because 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 um it because it can because go e because go either way be based. I'd say even I'd say even when the Smith actually makes a proper appearance, um it's ambiguous. Andro androgynous, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean that they're going to be a romanceable character. <laughs> sure, why not? For both the of the main character, head. for both main character types. <laughs> yes. Um, for for See, the I... for the king, as give, given given the given the um, setup, um, I think we I think we should go with female on that one. Mm -hmm. um, so the queen. Yeah. So we sent we essentially ha we essentially have an ex biker an ex biker queen becoming a becoming a good teacher. <laughs> okay. Um, Wait a minute. We have Misato not sucking at, t at treating children. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, yeah. I can go. I, I, I can I can cer I can certainly go with that. Um, so it's it's Misato from the final rebuild movie then. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> um, Although, st although, still, still, probably, still, probably has way too much beer in the fridge. Hmm. There's no such thing, and you know it, monk. 
No such thing as too much alcohol. Yeah. Um. Prob- probably has probably had. We can't have we can't have pen pen, but maybe but maybe a pe- but maybe a pet dog. Oh, we I still can see need- that. Well, we we still haven't picked a mascot character yet for, the, <laughs> for, the, for this game. So, um, you know. although th- although um the the whole mascot thing only ha- only happened with four and five, and Morgana had Morgana had and both of them had some degree of utility. Um, yeah, that's true. Three didn't have one, so we don't really need to do that. We don't really need to do a third one, a third that thing thrice. Um, between between the three of them, I I get the feeling that the of now first off of the of the um per, of the personas that of the people that we have here, who who do you think who do you think would who do you think would work best as the as as have should we have one of them have these scouting abilities or should we get or should that be given to a whole other oh, character? Oh, uh, the support you mean you mean the support yes. Yeah. Um, I think that because our Smith is a Hikikomori, um, and they're very fastidious and, and productive, they'll be our support navigator. Actually, yeah, why, that, why, don't we, why don't we do why don't we do a bit of double duty? Um, when whenever the party goes diving, they're the only ones who create a a, a um, avatar to participate. Everybody else is there physically, but they they're able to create. They're able to pull double duty as both radar as both radar and as and as an avatar in combat. It's just that the avatar looks li- looks like a sh- essentially a sh- essentially a humanoid silhouette. Hmm. An avatar know. that is a silhouette. I don't know. Hikikomori, Hikikomori that uh, that works as the support this navigator character. Isn't that just Futaba all over again? You're right. It can, on one on one sense it is, but on the on the other end we're um we're pulling we're pulling double duty with that concept because Futaba. Well, you could nev- te- you technically actually no in Persona in uh, actually no in Persona uh Royal Five Royal you could put Futaba on the party. It is certainly a fair point, although on the on the other hand. Do we, do we do do we even need do we even need to do we even need to have the navigator archetype or no can, the navigator uh, archetype isn't necessary because we're not diving into the into the uh, the collective consciousness mm-hmm. since we're fighting against fate there's no way to navigate that is true and I'd I'd say in, I'd say in that regard they probably they they probably they probably have you'd probably use alternative methods to na- to navigate like like say some like say some sort of compass like effect no the the um they're given a miniature armillary sphere which is also part of what allows them to enter the planetariums for the velvet room um that's their navigational tool yeah um this sphere will always guide you where where uh, where the fate you must fight is located, or whatever. We'll mm-hmm. we'll come up with some better speech. Um, oh, could, sure. you, could you could you could you write could you write down how how that's supposed to be um, spelled so I get it right in here? Oh, armillary sphere. A yeah. arm illary. A r m i l l a r y. And yeah. I'm absolutely. Now that I've seen it, I absolutely must have one of these for my desk. <laughs> Armillary spheres are nice. It's just a good one that looks nice. It's also expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, I'd have on. one. Yeah, time to go on Etsy. <laughs> oh, <See what laughs> <you're laughs> uh, could be worse. You could try and get one on Wish. <laughs> <laughs> I have had nothing but good luck with Etsy. I've I've gotten tons of ri- tons of uh, rings and. The accessories and stuff like that from Etsy. They're they're good people. Oh, Etsy are good people. I just like picking on Wish. <laughs> it's not at least it's not overstock.com. <laughs> mm-hmm. So one other thing that I think I think we sh- I think we should establish is the is the preferred is the preferred weapon of of each. The o- the exception to this is um so- is Sora. 
simply be, simply because the approach that that they've always had is um they is they can pick any weapon. They di- well they yeah. they're odd, they're an odd jobs person. Their their persona is Musashi, who always encouraged learning the way, quote unquote the way of the sword from every walk of life. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, I think that they would fight barehanded at first. Thank you, Baito. Punch. <laughs> so we're so. So you're. I'm thinking of. I, I'm getting Chie flashbacks. Yeah, yeah. Um. Not necessarily Chie. More Akihiko from three. Hmm. Actually, what? Why not? Why not a little column A and a little column B? Have, have him, have him go, have him go. Um. Have him go. Have him go. Um. Um, fr- um, French kickboxing. French kickboxing you mean savate? Yeah, savate. I, I don't know mm-hmm. why the name was. Or savat, I think, is actually how it's pronounced. Savat. Yeah, I was tempted to go with Muay Thai, but we already did. We already did that twice. But that would be a good. Yeah. It would be a good approach to do something like that, so you can have a bit of throwing hands and a bit of throwing legs. Yeah. Um. The, um, the def. The defender, be, the defender being a being being a prosecutor, um, I w- I am t- I am tempt I was tempted to go with a shield as th- as their pref- as their preferred weapon. Um, I'm gonna not- be better. I'm gonna be better than you, and I'm gonna say a hammer. The hammer of ju- the hammer of justice. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go with a good. Let's go with a good old two two handed hammer. It also fits the whole big sister will protect you. Yeah, I, <laughs> by pulling a hammer from hammer space. Yeah, I um. Oh, the remo- oh, the Ramona Flowers p- power set. <laughs> yeah. Um. For 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 the priestess, given that given the whole independent journalist, um. I'm thinking of I'm thinking a fencing sword. I'm think like I'm thinking a um a sa- a saber. Because of of their rapier wit. Rapier wit and also and also something that something that's the closest thing to a pen because the pen is mightier than the sword. Hmm. The penis might. <laughs> Uh, back when super when, back when Saturday Night Live was funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so for our mer- our Mercury being being a being a co- being the the whole the whole co- the whole confidence woman. Um. I don't know I don't know why, but I'm thinking a. I keep I keep thinking of I keep thinking of of say, a rope dart or some or some some sort of some sort of flexible weapon. Even even possibly a even possibly a weighted chain. Well, no, because the weighted chain would then uh, clash with the whole breaking chains to to summon persona. Um, flexible but also rigid at the same time is what you're looking for here. What about a what about a spear? I was gonna suggest a three section staff. I like that better. We don't see enough of those. Mm. Like I said, flexible but also rigid. Mm-hmm. Um, and it tricks you at the last moment, just yeah. like a con man. Um, for the for our v, for our Venus, give, given given that the, given their particular whole their particular thing of a of a construction worker, we can't go we can't go with hammers we can't go with hammers on that. Unfortunately, because that that'd be double dipping. Mm-hmm. But I a, go ahead. I don't know. I'm uh, hit him with a shovel. <laughs> Axes. I, don't know. Axes. I, I was, I was, I was, I was gonna go a little more silly with it because we do sometimes have silly weapons like chairs. Yeah, like Thank chairs. You, Con- <laughs> Thank you, Kanji. And I was going to suggest a circular saw. Mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, 
not you, not weaponizable enough. Uh, well, then then a normal chain enough. then a normal chainsaw. I'm I'm sticking with axes. Like just just just, just dual one handed axes. Tomahawks. Mm -hmm. No fire axes. Two one handed fire axes. That's an upgradable weapon. Yeah. Mm. Look, I'm not going to have the top weapon be, be named Getter Tomahawk no matter how many times you ask, Zan. <laughs> I'm not the one who said Tomahawks! That was JT! That was me. <laughs> yeah, but, get yeah, but you, yeah, but you have get, but, but you are susceptible to have to, you're susceptible to Getter Rays, so had to be done. Excuse me, I absorb those like they're candy. I'm made of metal. And anyway, he for, is Iron Man. For our for our Mars, um, given given the given um the have the the um the t given the whole um given the whole start the whole um startup del startup delivery. I think it. I think it would be kind of. I think it'd be kind of amusing given the whole Avatar thing for for it to be, um, sword and board. Um, this is for our Kikiko Mori, who mm -hmm. puts himself into battle through the end an avatar. Yeah. Oh, um, our Mars. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he yeah he he like creates a digital avatar to fight for him. Yeah, yeah. I was I was thinking either sword and shi sword and shield or um or spear and shield. Spear and shield would fit better for a Japanese student. Might have been the one thing he was good at before he left uh, society forever. Mm -hmm. Um. Next is uh, next is our Jupiter. And uh, she. Hmm. Not sure how we do that. Bicycle chain. <laughs> um. Actually, actually, get actually. I, is, she the, is she the is she the muscle? Is she the heavy hitter or something? Or, I don't know. I get I get the I get the feeling that give, given the whole given the whole leader thing, I'm think I'm thinking if there's anybody who would be, if there's anybody who in the in in the on the on the floors to enlightenment would would carry would carry a would carry the tradition a traditional Japanese weapon. It would be it would be our Jupiter. So I'm thinking um. I'm th I'm just thinking straight up katana. Hmm. Boken, yeah. because because she's an ex uh Yankee. psycho mm -hmm. yeah, she she's an she's an ex uh psycho gang leader. Um she wouldn't be using an actual sword cuz that no. actually would have gotten them arrested really early. Oh yeah, I I'm I'm more refer I'm, I'm more referring to the fact that when they're in th when they're in these hypothetical um shadow worlds mm -hmm. um the the we the weapons the weapons that cr that are created are manifestations of of their particular wills. Yeah, and I uh, think that then, even then, even with yeah, but then what would you buy at the item shop? That's the thing. You would you know how you remember how remember how adding um adding key, adding keychains to the keyblade changes its properties. You're yeah, getting, you're getting something like that. Some sort of, some sort of um for lack of a better term fetish. That manifests itself into into different weapons. She'll attach fuzzy dice to her Pokémon. Yeah. <laughs> so what? And so what and I'm going and with? And, it, and, it, and it's a keepsake Pokémon from back in the day, and she's just like, "Oh, I haven't held this in a while." Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so the, so it's so the things that you would get in stores are are these kind of are these kind of accessories that you might get you might get in random shops. Um, now, as far as, as far as the as far as our um, as far as our soldier gun, they're going to get a gun. I mean, <laughs> they they work for the JSDF, meaning they're one of the few Japanese people allowed to have their gun. Um, so I, I, I that would affect their mentality a lot. They're going to have what is the current <laughs> uh, service rifle for the JSDF? That's a good question. I would like to know. It's probably getting it's it's probably gonna end up getting confusing because I think they I think they do the whole type number number thing. Hoa type eighty nine is yep. the 
is the uh, the Hoa Type eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Also, also referred to as the Type eighty nine five five six rifle, and it is known in the in the JSDF service as Buddy. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Back in eighty nine, I was set in the place, Buddy, 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 all up in your face. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I would say it's been the service rifle for uh, the JSDF since 1989. So, yeah, hence, hence the numbering. Oh. Oh. Although there is a new HOA Type 20 from 2020 that is only that is intended to eventually replace the Type 89. And it's a much more modern looking rifle. Mm-hmm. So I think we just go with the HOA 20. Um, so, t- um, the, ho- is it H-O-W-A? Yeah, the HOA Type 20 is H-O-W-A, yeah. Um, I was, I was debating about whether or not we do the, we do the melee and, re- melee and firearm a-, a la Persona 5, but going, That's going very to- unique to, per- to Persona 5. Yeah, going with, going with this, I think, I think works a little bit better, plus... It allows it allows the one person with a with a ranged we- with a um ranged weapon to at to have a imp- to have an impact. Yeah. Oh. Now when now, let me make let me make sure I get that. I should also be a little bit more specific in what I mentioned earlier regarding the Japanese self defense force and firearms. Mm-hmm. They are the few Jap- one of the few Japanese members allowed to ha- regularly handle firearms. I did not mean to imply that they owned their firearms because I believe those firearms are still kept in a lockup when they're not in use. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. But when Inci- incidentally we di- um I don't think we nailed down a name for the uh, for the um, realm where sh- realm where shadows exist, uh, realms or realms when sh- where shadows exist. I know we joked about stairway to heaven, but that's not a name we can go with. Um, uh, patent, patent pending. Um. Well, the real question is: Are these shadows, or are they something else instead? Because again, we're we've we've broken past the id. Of humanity, we're no longer in humanity's collective unconscious. We're not part of the instincts of humanity and the things that they hide. We are instead now fighting against humanity's fate to establish a fate all our own. Um, so the first thing we need to determine is what are these fates? What do we call them? Are they shadows or are they something else? Misfortunes. Misfortunes could be, um, could be one way, uh, but it's not so much the fact that there's a for- that they're a misfortune. It's the fact that there's there's fortune involved at all. I think they should just be called the fortunate, those who have destiny, who have fate, and rely on it. So you think you're thinking of going with fortunate as the monster entries instead of shadows? Yeah. Oh no, no shadows. That's a bit of a de- that's a pretty big deviation. I mean, but you can't have shadows anymore because you're no longer looking into the shadows of humanity. You're looking yeah, beyond yeah. humanity into the light of fate. Mm-hmm. So how does one awaken their persona in this game? Maybe we by should, we breaking should. their fortune. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You fa- you face your fortune. And, you know, much like I am you, you am I, I am the shadow, the true self, this is, I am you, I am you as you will be, I am the fortune, your destiny. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to rhyme that, but now I realize it did. Uh, Instead of fortune, could we use maybe fate? The fate you're ascribed to, and the fate you break away from? Because fate is what you are, you know, doomed to become. Destiny is what you forge yourself. Well, no. Des- destiny is still an implication of of something given. Right. So maybe we should say like the we you defeat you change your fate. I guess you could say. I mean, 
you're going to break your fate. Mm -hmm. you, the, yeah, the entire yeah. reason that self-determination is here is you you are casting off the chains of fate. Accepting one fate instead of another is still accepting a chain. Um, yeah, and you and you face the uh, the des the uh, the destination of your original fate, and then you you smash that and awaken a persona. Mm-hmm. Except for the main character who never seems to have to face a uh, shadow or ever. That is true. <laughs> or rather, we should say that the final boss is usually them facing a shadow. <laughs> <laughs> Adachi was definitely used shadow. Oh, wow. That's for sure. Um, oh, so, per Persona 4 was just so, so well written. It was just so damn good. Jeez. Yeah. Um, so, get. The 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 honestly the approach that I'm, that I'm that I'm considering now when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to the wor when it comes to the world it's the alternate world that you're go that you're going with we we kind of we kind of mentioned sa um sam sa um samsara um as well as well as the as well as the whole thing with um ch as well as the whole thing with chakras um I am. I am th I'm thinking I'm thinking of of it being the, of it being the loom I the I you're you're go you're going through the loom of fate to escape it Okay, Lachesis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean if the shuttle fits loom it mm -hmm. Um yeah, we could call it the loom. Uh that makes sense. I mean each level would be a row of threads within the Within the loom. Given uh, given given that, should we go with should we go with um, th should we go with threads as the monsters? Yeah, I think that can work. We can we can think of them as the threads, the threads of fate. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would s now persona f persona five brought back brought back one concept that had been missing for years when it. Or rather, than present in Shin Megami Tensei, but hadn't been in a Persona game for a while, and that I that is um, negotiation. Yeah, do you it, think we, are you thinking we should have negotiation in this one for our wild card? I I do, I do. What I'm but what I'm, what I'm thinking of what I'm thinking of do what I'm thinking of doing is um is is instead instead mm -hmm. of a instead of a hold up. Um, in that in that particular sense, they get challenged to a du a duel. If they if they lose the duel, they are considered conquered and and at, and added to and added to the compendium. Okay. Um, but and, there are specific. But each thread has its own specific uh, conditions for being dueled. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Otherwise, you just kill it or it runs away. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Plus, it plus it fits the whole thing with Musashi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there, there pro and well, there's probably one. There's probably one monster. There's probably one monster who could who will go with who we who we can who we can we can force the joke of you dare mock my botchal. <laughs> If you know, stop. if you know, you know, and no, I will not stop. Stop. <laughs> but, but given, now given all, given all of the, given all of that, um, so we ha we have our we have our cast. We're not going to do social links because if we do that, we're going to be here for nights. Um, yes. We have our alternate realm of go of going into the loom and go and going through going going and going up it to es to escape fate. We have our means of acquiring monsters through challenging a monster to a duel, which also means that the only one who the only one who can who can force that is is uh, the is the protagonist. Mm -hmm. Um. And. Eh, and the the one of the I th we I think we say that one of that a lot that a lot of what we'd see in the in the story arcs is a wait is a wager between f 
between Philemon and Nyarl and Nyarlathotep on the on whether or not humanity can escape fate. With the pros uh, with go ahead. It, it, well, the this is the wager that Philemon and, and Nyarlathotep mm -hmm. have had since Persona One, where can humans become better than they are versus do humans destroy themselves? Mm -hmm. Neither of them is actually looking for humanity to escape fate itself. Igor, as their go-between, who's always had a soft spot for humans, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> is, well, acting as a mediator and the proprietor of the Velvet Room. Yeah. And in so doing, is also, in any way that he can, trying to give the party the hints towards the third option of defying fate altogether. I'd... Right. I get... If so, I get the feeling that our that this version of Igor, his his at his attitude is that he fi he finds he, he finds that humans make existence interesting. Yes, it's part of why he's always liked humans, and it's part of why um, Yaldabaoth put him you know imprisoned him because uh, <laughs> having Igor around to actually help uh, the protagonist Joker would have been. Disastrous for yelled about early on. <laughs> now, one per obviously there there are there are way too many. Um, I think we can still use the whole elemental strength and weakness from the, from the core games. Um, yeah. Now I had mentioned before doing a doing a four doing a four act structure. Mm -hmm. um, which is which is a common which is a common thing in J in um, Japanese culture. Yes. Um, I just hang on. I need to the na the name for the name for the structure is Kisho Tenketsu. Yeah. This is not the same as Johaku. Mm hmm. Um. Which is which? Now, obviously, now this is something that's appeared in both China and Korea. But the approach is um, introduction, development, twist, and conclusion. And I, th I think, I think that is, I think that is a good, I think that is a good arc to arc to use with e with each par each part, um, with each with each season's focus, starting with especially since spring is the is renewal. Or or the or the or the renewed start. Yes. Summer the peak, autumn where things go down, and and winter the and winter the worst just before renewal restarts. So I th I think we I think those are two things we can integrate with this concept. So, with with that particular thing in mind, um, we obviously go, obviously going into going into all the um all the meanings for e for each. Each card in the in the season deck would be would be pushing our luck a little. So I'd like I'd like to I'd like to pick I'd like to pick you guys' brains as far as as far as how you'd have the overall arc for each season. Okay. We'll start starting with spring. I think we can we kind of we kind of touched upon this, um, but I do I do think I do think that the that um. By the end, of, by the end of spring, we should have the majority of the ca of the cast in hand. Yeah. Um. In this case, we, uh, the... we, we still doing the weather mechanic uh, from the previous games. You know, changing season, changing seasons, changing weather conditions and stuff. Actually, no. <laughs> I'm uh, instead instead of instead of going instead of going with that. I'm I'm honestly I'm honestly thinking of bring, of bringing back the phases, and have and having that have an effect on the strength of monsters. Mm -hmm. uh, especially since that's that's far that's far more of a tradition within the Shin Megami Tensei series. Moon Moon phase is determining how strong or have, giving a strength or or giving a strength boost or a strength. Um, detriment to monsters. I, ooh, I have, dude. I have an even better idea. Since we're dealing with planets and stars and planetariums, why not the how? Why not the, the star? Why not the progression of the stars in the sky? Um, let me raise you one further. The zodiac. We have it means the, that yeah. you have to include Zophiacus and a few others. 
hmm? for accurate tracking. <laughs> um, no, but I was, th I was thinking these, I was thinking these zodiac entries we have in the deck. Yeah, I know. I'm making it. It was a small, yeah. it was a small Q Ranger joke. Okay, come depending on. Depending on what, depending on what house the sun is in, the what house the sun is in, or you know what if Mercury is in retrograde, or you know something like that. I wasn't going. I was. Yeah, now we're talking. The planets I wasn't going with. I was going with the with the cycle of the zodiac. That too. Mm -hmm. um, but I, especially especially since especially since each season has three zodiac associated with it. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Um. The 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 top the um source the source card for each rep represented representing all three. Um, yeah. And each one, each one does use each zodiacs, each um, not zodiac, but each season suit does use all of the planets. So the the way the way that I the way that I um I see it um we ha we first we first start with our prote our protagonist um Sora. Is is just is just somebody who go, just somebody who goes from district to district, sometimes even town to town, um, taking taking on taking on whatever whatever odd jobs will will pay for the moment. Yep, and that's why they're currently in Akihabara in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say, I'd say that. That's that's the normal end of things. I'd say I'd say what's, what's their home base? Are they what what's their home base? Are they living out of an apartment or like a halfway house or something like that, or just something temporary? Or? Um, probably a small probably a small apartment. Okay. Yeah, they, I'd say I'd say they basically jump. I'd say they basically jump between either small apartments or jump between um between between cheap hotels. You know, just you gotta be. Because you gotta be somewhere st stuck somewhere when night comes or something when it's bedtime or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. E Capsule hotels. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. The, or at least at least that's what it was in, in his in his in his normal life. Um, or maybe or maybe at the in the in the game you start at Capsule hotels and then you work your way up and expand to like a bigger. Well, bigger dig bigger digs or something. I don't know. I'm, act I'm that's now. I'd say the I'd say the first one that they that they meet up with is the is the is the defender. But before that, they uh, before all this happens, they do end up having dreams of going to going to the velvet room. Of course. Um. <laughs> I had I had Ari of the Soul on loop while I, while I was while I was preparing tonight. I don't need it to be any worse. <laughs> um, but the pr the okay soundtrack blues in the velvet aria of the soul blues in the velvet room or electronica in the velvet room or jazz in the velvet room um i'm th i'm thinking jazz in the velvet room <laughs> i don't know considering that we're in akihabara electronica might actually fit better <laughs> No, uh, those are actually previous tracks from previous. I know. Uh, I know. I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. Well, the um, although give, given given the planetarium, if we can if we can find if we can find some way to interpret how Ari of the Soul would would sound like in a would sound like in a large church, that would that would be appropriate. And I'm going with I church will. because because large room, which which means you can do interesting things with acoustics. Let me see if there is a classical arrangement with pipe organ of Aria of the Soul. Oh, God oh, I get, oh, I guarantee it. <laughs> well, you look for that. Let me. Uh, while you for look for that, I'm gonna get a get a drink. I'll be right back. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh... But the I think, but the I'd say the, I'd say the first I'd say the first part of the I'd say the first part of the of the setup is what's is. How is how they end up how they end up meeting up with a with a prosecutor? The approach the approach that I'm thinking of is that they were they were doing a they were doing a normal job say say um help, saying how being an being an extra pair of hands at a I would say either a convenience store or because it's Akihabara 
a host club? Um, he probably wouldn't, or he or she probably wouldn't do a host club um, as a as a worker, due to the fact that 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 commits you. Mm-hmm. Once you've connected with enough customers, a host club really tries to keep you. Because I was thinking either that or they're or they're working at, or they're working as a as a backup cook in a, in some cafe. That makes more sense. Um. But in ter- in terms of how in terms of how they end up meeting a a prosecutor due to the due to the whims of fate, I'm think I'm think I'm thinking that something ha- something happens at that ca- at that cafe and they're called on to, as a witness. Mm-hmm. Um. It could it there's a couple there's a couple of possibilities. Um, one ang- one angle is is that is they were is they were um. They were they were witness to to some to some kind of to some kind of dispute, um, as te- as tempting as it is to to do some sort of to for there to be some sort of hold up. Nah, that's nah, that's not look, let's not go with that. Or to go with the whole whims of fate thing, the um um, um the this particular this particular cafe had had some sh- was be- was being a bit shady. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's just it's just that it's just that the shadiness was was something that was not was um not was something that he wasn't aware of. As, yeah. As far as he was concerned, it's just another paycheck. So I I get the feeling that the the approach we can go with is um is some pe- some people some people were um they found they found st- they found st- they found stolen goods mm-hmm. af- after after a bit after a warrant. And he and he was call, and he was called in to to, to testify and base, basic basically and basically um and basically end up getting end up getting grilled until the realization is that this get this get this sort this sort of person has no has no idea what was going on. <laughs> yeah, not to say Sora was an was an idiot. It's just he was just he or she wasn't thinking wasn't thinking about that. Wasn't really paying attention. Yeah. Was, Hey, hey! I do a job. I get paid. Then I go somewhere else. Yep. Um. And I would say, I would say, um, I would say that, I would say that's, when, I would say that's when you really have between those two, you really have the call to action where they end up getting pulled in. They end up getting pulled into the loom. Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Um, Welcome back. Um, I posted the thing I found in a mm-hmm. To dis- Why is my mouth not working? Geekwatch in Geekwatch. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, but I would say, and I I do want to make I do want to make clear the um, they are, um Sora is Sora is not on tr- is not on trial as a as an access as an accessory to to the, to this um to this ring of theft. He's mm-hmm. he's um he or she is called he or she is called in because they were working that day. Um. Now as for, I would I would say that I would say that after after that they they end up witnessing one of the other people, um. And who who get who gets real who gets really grilled by um by by Hikaru. And that and that's that's when th- that's when things that's when things start to go a bit start to go a bit south after af- after the tr- after the trial. Um. And they and they end up in they end up in the first layer of the loom, i.e. the i.e. the lowest part the lowest part of it. Which yeah. Um. Maya beat my which um not Maya Mas. Uh, Masa Hikaru, our pr- our prosecutor, give, given what's going, given her, in, given her instincts, wants to do the whole, wants to do the whole protection thing, but, um, so, but Sora, it Sora fi- Sora doesn't quite fit doesn't quite figure out what's going on, but has has a mindset of I've seen I've seen that I've seen this landscape while I sleep, and he and he's the he's the one who pulls his chain the first time. Yeah. Um. And 
of course, of course, through that you have you have your first you have your first, you basically have your tutorial fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and at, at the at the end of it, um, Hikaru see, Hikaru seeing seeing him seeing um, Sora pull pull his chain deci- decides to tr- decides to try something similar, which is which is how which is how she ends up learning how this place actually works. Um. After after that after that the two of them the two of them get a phone call. The the person on the other on the other end uh, is uh, is our um is uh, is is our Mars. Bas- basically basically saying basically saying congrats congratulations on managing to survive the to survive the loom. Or Mars knew about it before anyone else. Yay! <laughs> the the approach that, that the approach that, that I'm going that, with is that Mar- is that when Mars di- when Mars discovered the loom and dis- and discovered um, personas, she she was spent she was she was scout she was scouring the net for similar instances to see if any to see if anybody else um, was 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 doing it. Hmm. Um. And and the, and through through the through the rumor mill where where apparently there was a story of t- of a of a part timer and a lawyer di- disappearing after a case, she put two and two together. And I should I would think the first uh, the protagonist and the uh, the protagonist and the. Uh, Prosecutor, mm-hmm. uh, our, our so our son, excuse me, um, would would uh, I I feel like their first encounter and them getting sucked pulled into the plot should be some sort of like thematic twist of fate or something like that, or it would be or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, the tricky the tricky part with this kind of narrative is actually is actually the starting point. Yeah. Oh. Um. I was, I was I was just offering that as as a potential example, but I'm op- I'm open to alternatives. The key. Well, thing... go ahead. I like I like that Mars is already uh, in on this, and what's cool is that uh, what Mars has done is because he fights with an avatar. Mm-hmm. Um, we already we, we that doubles as a cute mascot. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. We kind of we kind of we created that without even trying. So yeah. there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But we, it would probably it would probably be just as well that that Mars that Mars make that um Mars ends up ends up bailing them both out. Mm-hmm. When the, when they when they end up get when they end up getting tossed into the loom. Um. So so, if we want it to be a dramatic twist of fate that gets them thrown into the loom in the first time, mm-hmm. um. It could be that this case that is being prosecuted dealing with this restaurant that mm-hmm. Sora was l- working at mm-hmm. uh, pl- plays into getting people to uh, as key material witnesses for a larger corruption or a collusion plot in play. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> when when a they disappear it uh unwittingly gives the a couple of the of the uh, witnesses the chance to get away mhm hmm and they're going to be our chekhov's gun for later okay yeah. now so now we have a narrative device we can pull from at any time we need to anytime mm-hmm. we want I like to put Chekhov's guns in my pockets for when I need them. Yeah. Yeah. I. There's. They're there's. Big. Um. Your pockets are bigger on the inside. <laughs> the. I'd say. I'd. I'd say. I'd say the. I'd say one. One particular. Particular. Particular approach that we can have as that kind of setup is sto- is stories of um, pe- of people and things vanishing, then re- then reapp then reappearing as if, as if um as if nothing had happened and not and not remembering. The di- the the moments or even days that they that they were gone. 
Oh, that that is something we never established. What happens when someone succumbs to the loom? I'd say when, I'd, I'd say when when they succumb when they you know how you know how a lot of people got pissed off over the rise of the NPC meme over that one article. Yeah, I'm think I'm thinking that people who succumb to the loom, um, lose lose uh, be lose in, lose a degree of independence. They just start to rely on whatever their place is within the world. Yeah, their their place, their their tribe. Because that that whole NPC meme started when and when an article was brought up about peop about a certain amount of people not having an inner mo not having an inner dialogue or an inner monologue. Yeah, and thus and thus us us who do have one making fun of them is going. Oh man, I guess that's what what it must feel like to be an NPC. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so but, the the people, much like how there was apathy syndrome in three, um, the the approach the approach that we, or people outright being murdered in four, mm -hmm. or well well five, five is five is a whole other beast entirely. But the the approach that the approach that I'm considering is that is that um is that some is that some is that after these um, spirited away incidents, they end they end up um, just just following a, just following a certain routine. And in some cases, it's going to be noted that these people who come back are um, like a lot of people who get spirited away are are likely going to be people who have an issue with society and their place within it. That's just going to be the nature of being sucked into mm -hmm. the loom. Yeah. And, but then when they come back, it's like they've they've determined exactly where they're needed, and they decided to be there. Mm -hmm. And to some people, that's going to be very be like, oh, maybe this is a good thing for them. But then, like some of their closest friends or whatever in interviews are going to be like, this just isn't like them. This is never something that they would have done. Mm -hmm. And that would that'll be our clues in the backgrounds before we get our ours. Um, yeah. And. I, I need I need to establish that because that's that's something that, because we need to have a sufficient amount of call to action. Yeah. So the so we have we have it that he was he was working in a cafe. Um, the police the police end up doing a raid a raid on the cafe and find a cache of a cache of st of stolen goods. He gets ca he gets called in for he is called in during the trial, and a and after afterwards, um. After after the trial goes into recess, he and the uh, and the um, prosecute and the prosecutor on the case end up getting end up getting pulled into the loom. Um, they get they get bailed out by Mars. Yeah. Who who is giving them very quick very 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 um in the moment instructions to pull the damn chain. Yeah. And. F and that's how we ha that's how we have our f that's how we have our tutorial fight. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. and on top of that, um, while the details aren't exactly important, the, the the biggest reason that the prosecutor gets pulled in with the main character is they're both discussing the next thing he has to answer as a witness. Mm -hmm. And f after the after that they end. They end up get they end up getting uh, Mars Mars's contact info on their on their cell phones because Mars contacts both of them. Um, just just tell, just telling them just telling them congr congratu congratulations on, on surviving the on surviving the loom. Most people most people come back, but they don't come back exactly the same. And I'm trying to find I'm trying to figure out what's going on. If uh -huh. you Based, and in some ways, in some ways, pulls a Morpheus with this. You've you've got two you've got two ch you've got two choices in front of you, either either a you can you can you can proceed to your normal life as if as if nothing ever happened, or b meet come to come to come to this location come to this location and and uh, and and help and help me and help me figure out the truth of what's going on. I, I can dig it. 
I've been quiet this whole time yeah. because I've more or less agreed with everything you guys have been proposing. So, yeah. uh, but I will admit that this is kind of leaning towards the red pill and blue pill thing with uh, Morpheus. But this is ba this is basically this is basically an ultimatum of if you if if you if you decide if you decide to dig into this, you're either you're either all in or you're all out. There is no there is no middle ground. There is no backing out once you t once you cross the threshold. Once you get into these things, the, the, the only way out is... There's only two ways out of it. One is death. The other is mental institutions. I'm going to say, ultimately, the reason that the choice given here feels like Morpheus is because Morpheus's choice is, too, is ultimately the same thing. Accept the fate of what's around you. Accept this as being your fate, or deny it and find out what's what reality is underneath. Mm -hmm. The only the only problem that uh, the Matrix had is that it didn't give the third option. Mm -hmm. Instead, it gave those to the terrible, terrible sequels, and the third option was optioned poorly. That's that's an, that's a whole other conversation. Um. That's good to bring it up. I like it. I dig it. But the whole, the whole, the the focus that we do that we do in this case is while the while the third option will manifest itself in time, it's it's more it's more of it's more of going. The world isn't what you isn't what you you know that the world isn't what it seems, and I and at least at least with me you'd have you'd have a you'd have a means to figure out to figure it out with me instead of. Instead, in or you or you could pretend none of it happens, but you but it would still be in the back of your mind even if you did. Mm -hmm. No matter what, you're changed. The question is, do you do you go with the change or do you just ignore it happened? Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, of course, even though this is presented as a choice, it really isn't. But um, but that's simply be that's simply because well, obvious reasons. Um. We could give a fail ending here if we wanted to. Yeah, you. Yeah, you could. could. Kind of like um, they do I mean, with it, with Golden Sun. You can choose not to save the world, and then the title screen just goes, and then the world ended <laughs> because um, you didn't do anything. Yeah, I just don't. I just don't want to turn into a Far Cry game. Is all. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's also um, the fact that Persona Five gave us a bad ending too. So, I mean. We we have options for multiple endings and where to put them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that being that being said, the obviously obviously after that you end up go you end up going to those to those particular coordinates, um, and that that's where that's where you end you end up you end up getting another another call from Mars, who who ex, who ex, who explain who explains that um. That pe that there there was a report that there was a report of a dis of a disappearance in this area. Um, basically, say, basically saying that um, they they tried they tried to dig what they could, but 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 e but their investigations have have its limits. Okay, let me let me can I bring something up here? Go ahead. What is, what is Mars' investment in this? Uh, what what is his stake in this? Why is he even? I mean, if he's a hickey neat who's you know a self you know a self made entrepreneur hickey neat uh, uh, hickey kamori who has shut himself away from the world, what motivation does he have to help anyone or even investigate these incidents at all? Um, I I consider I consider it a ca I consider it a case of. He does, um Mars doesn't Mars does not care for hu for human contact but he but has an interest in in the ebb and flow of humanity as groups. Okay. I also I would also think that his discovery of the loom is what drove him into Hik Hikikomori in the first place. Pa possibly. Hmm. Cuz see okay. seeing seeing the seeing the concept that that everyone around him is is just is just fulfilling an assigned task. Prob probably, uh, and and that and the that and the combination of the fact that he or she could see this, but everyone else couldn't, probably drove them to being that level of shut in. But still, ha but still having a but still having a very savvy mind about things. 
Okay. I'm just wondering, you know, just what, what, I mean, what's his motivation for helping in the first place and wanting to move forward in the first place? Um, that's all. That's all. Yeah. I, and I can, I can certainly see that. And that, that is, that is something to, that is something to explore. Um, Eve, G, whatever. Uh, it's empty. It's empty. You must know, um, and as far as the whole disliking humans and and um, but liking humanity, you could say it's a less extreme version of Spider Jerusalem, but that's kind of pushing it. <laughs> no, or, no, 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 or or you could say it's just a, uh, it's just another uh, blink in the in the uh, in the loom. Mm-hmm. Um, ah, no game, no life jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will note that there is that there is one concept that I that I had been kicking around earlier to, earlier today, when it came to when it came to finding ways to make the wild card unique, compared compared to the whole oh you can oh you can handle multiple personas thing that we've seen, and then and I was racking my brain about how about how to do it because I didn't want to do the whole spread the wild card around a la Q. But the approach that the approach that I'm considering instead, anyone remember the Magatama? The Magatama from what? The Hydra. Nocturne. Okay. The Hydra. What I'm th- oh. what I'm thinking of is each per- each is when it comes to when it comes to personas there there are, when it comes to personas that the wild card has there are cer- there are certain there are certain abilities and, and attributes that. That in it, they equip a they equip a sep, a fortune. This this fortune can pl- can play can play a factor in the in um, in the in universal abilities that their personas have, or if, or a factor in how their personas grow. Mm-hmm. Um, it can also it can also also give the possibility of sh- of a kind of shared bank of abilities that they can equip to pers- to the personas that they have. Mm-hmm. Like I, I felt I felt that doing that would would fill the whole growth thing at, while still doing wild cards. Yeah. Well, and again, the 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 fortunes. The fortunes are not shadows, thus they can't actually be persona. Mm-hmm. Uh, the persona come from the the uh, the unconscious mind, from the collective unconscious, and from your own id. Mm-hmm. Um, the wild card being able to use multiple fortunes is more the uh, fact that he is a wild card that breaks all fates and not just w- the, their own. Um. Why again? Why we also gave them the usurper. Mm-hmm. Um, so using it more like the Magatama from Nocturne makes sense. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially since I th- I think I think Nocturne I think Nocturne needs more love, anyways. And I liked the Magatama system. That not, mm-hmm. I I will admit I have a I have a soft I have a soft spot for for the motif of the demi fiend. A a a human with a demon's body, and I know I know Devilman did it first, but that doesn't that doesn't mean that, that doesn't mean they have to be the only one doing it. And don't you dare start with that thing. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. He, he's the devil man. Oh, uh, but I'd I'd say I'd say this I'd say this is a prime opportunity to introduce um. To introduce the our moon, who was who was all who was also inve- who was also investigating the goings on because a friend of a friend asked asked to look for asked to look for some a um their spouse who had disappeared in this in that same area. You two are back. Where is he? We didn't see him while we were there. Mm-hmm. Where, while you were where? And this is where the prosecutor jumps in. Don't answer questions you're asked. <laughs> Just listen to me for a second. Hey guys. Uh, hey guys, I got I got work in the early morning, man. I, I gotta call it. I gotta call it quits, all man. I gotta go. All right, man. But, all right, man. Thank but you. promise, but promise me that you guys will find a way to interweave Philemon into the story, into the narrative story as a character. I, okay. I'm very interested to see what you come up with. Oh yeah. 
I I'm fairly certain we will be doing that. But thank thank you for making the effort and thank you for coming by, thank you for coming by, JT. Well, thank you all for having me. This is Handsome Devil, and I am out. Mm. <laughs> see you later, man. Peace. See you, Zan. Good to see you again. And then there were two. Yep. So, with obvious, obviously, obviously, as the, as this investigation goes on, all three of them get pulled back into the loom, which is which is how, which is how our journalist star, starts is is able to see it for the first time, and that's when he. When he when he is able to unlock his um pers his persona, yeah. Um, as well, and I'd I'd say I'd say in do I'd say in doing so, one. This is one of the other things that happens when someone tra when someone transfers into the loom is that is that's when they're able to they're able to summon their we they're able to summon their weapons in the same way that say. Um, in Kingdom Hearts, people summon their we people summon their weapons as if it's a flash of light, or the the summoning it out of mist from the Stormlight Archive. Mm -hmm. When it com when it comes, um, when it com when it comes to when it comes to the shard blades in that series, yeah, they don't ha they uh don't always have it on their person, but they're able to. But in the loom, they're able to call upon a construct of that weapon at a moment's notice. Yeah, since that weapon is bound to them by uh, the fate they are currently under. Mm -hmm. um, I think that on top of this, this is going to be the first eyewitness um, first eyewitness uh, account of what happens to a person who succumbs in the uh, in the loom because they're gonna they're gonna find this this person's spouse. Yeah. Um, basically being assaulted, but from all sides by the fortunes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I think we just de didn't we decide to call them threads. Oh yes, the threads. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Uh, and then uh, as the threads finish him, he's bound by them, and then he disappears. Yeah, I kind of kind of almost cocooned by them. In fact, would you would you say he's cocooned by a, by a by a bunch of chains? Um, the threads cover him. They turn into a cocoon of chains, mm -hmm. and then he's dragged back to the real world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Thus, he becomes chained to his fate. Mm -hmm. And I'd I'd say I'd say when they when they find him, um, he his his only mindset is he ha he has to go to work. Um, I think it should be a little bit more than that. It should it should have a "Quote unquote coincidental overlap between the uh, the prosecutor and the and the um, the investigative journalist in so far that I recognize that guy from some recently submitted court documents. Mm -hmm. um, it looked like him and his wife were getting ready for divorce, and now he's not anymore. Yeah, that um." Because because the, because the fate assigned to him is 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 to be married to is to be married to his spouse. Mm -hmm. oh. To to be married to his spouse and to and to uh, to essentially be the the provider in his family. Mm -hmm. And so being chained to that fate has forever made him. Uh, forever made him a part of that, which makes the spouse immensely happy when he gets back. But uh, kind of creeps out both um, both the prosecutor and the and the journalist. How how about this? Up until up until he disappeared, the two of them were were bit were were known around the area for bickering at e bickering at each other almost every day. Mm -hmm. And 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 all all signs were pointing to them going them getting a divorce. Then he disappears. We go th we go through the whole thing with the loom. He comes back. He comes back, and all of a sudden, they're all of a sudden they're they're a they're a happy couple, acting yeah. acting like they were new acting like they were newlyweds all over again. Yeah. Which ev and everybody and everybody else just accept just accepts it as an as a normal thing. Whereas th whereas the three whereas our three party members at this point look at look at it as well actually four par actually four party members by this point. 
mm-hmm. look at it look at it as this is this is not right. This is not who they were. What happened to this person? Mm-hmm. It's also going to give them the first clue as to just exactly what's happening in the loom. Yeah. Uh, of course, at, of course, at the end of at the end of that, you would, you would, I'm I am th- I'm thinking of go- I'm thinking of going with the with the idea that the that um Sorad Sor- Sor- decides to head back decides to head back to his ot- head back to his hotel or find a new hotel to. Sh- a new capsule hotel to shack up for the night, mm-hmm. but um, but Hika- but Hikaru was like, "You're not, you're not doing that. I, I've got, I've got, I've got a spot. I've got a place with enough room. You're, sh- you're shacking with me." And of course, then our uh, our other two party members, uh, Mars is going to be like, "I, I'd never have that chance," and uh. Of course, the moon is going to make snide remarks because investigative journalists are still kind of smug about that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, but be- oh, and of, co- of course, you, of course, you can't, you can have it that our that our sun that our sun and moon constantly make j- are making jabs at each other constantly. Gotta. Um. Now, as as far as the the pattern that I want to go with with spring is that each case introduces a new introduces a new party member. So so far we have we have the usurper as our starter. We have the def- we have the defender. We ha- or sorry, we have our void. We have our sun. We have our mo- we have our moon. Mm-hmm. Um, we have out we have our mo- we have our and we have our Mars. Yeah. Um, I would say that that when the usurper sleeps. He ends up, um, he ends up, ha- he ends up sitting in that same planetarium again, and um, I- Igor, I- Igor is si- Igor and um, and Ophelia are sit are sitting on the are sitting on the other side. He was sitting on the other side, or po- or possibly sitting in the same row as him. Oh, um, I had thought about doing the other side, but uh, but I feel I feel like for something like this, it should be a little bit more intimate. Hmm. Because because the way the way I visioned the first time he goes into the velvet room is him is him walking in, and um taking and taking the seat, and then he, and then he hears Igor's voice saying, "Excuse me, is the seat next to you taken?" Oh, <laughs> Um, but um, I said that backwards. <laughs> yes, you did. Um, but. In, but in the, but in the velvet room, he he start he starts to he starts to lay the hint that if you want if you want to, if you want to seek out the tr- if you want to seek out the truth, uh, and, uh, of of the tw- of these of the twisted fate, then you then you must then you must reach t- then you must reach the top of the, the top of the loom to see, to see the to see who spins the yarns, who spins the threads. Mm-hmm. Um. And find the person laying the pattern. Yeah. And of of course, of course, the event eventually through that you that's where you introduce things like the persona persona compendium and the concept of and the concept of fusion or or similar men, methods to mo, to modify persona. Yeah. Um. The. The. Per, um, the next ca- the next case I'd say would be themed around our um, mer- our Mercury, and I'd say I'd say I'd say in the in this particular instance, it's the f- it's the fact that this that I it would be te- it would be tempting to have it that she that she's um that she's part that she's part of a case that um that Masa is co- is covering. But inst- instead, um, instead I'm thinking of Masa, Masa getting, dr- um, that th- that there was that one of the one of the people who it, who is considered a, is considered a suspect, or rather or rather someone who had a, who had a similar disappearance. We're pro- um, we're probably gonna we're probably gonna call these people rewrites. A a. A uh, re- a rewrite was spo- was supposed to hold a cha- was supposed to hold a charity ball. Mm-hmm. 
and that I'd say that I'd say that's the perfect place to in, to introduce someone who's supposed to be a confidence woman. Yeah. Um. Who had who had been work who had been working her mark at this until until for weeks and then all and then all of a sudden, said said Mark decides decides not to decides to not willingly willingly give her his valuables. <laughs> Which, which of which of course is which of course is going to is going to perturb her, and that and that's when she gets that's when she gets pulled into the loom. Yeah. Um. You can you can you can kind of have a similar thing. There is going to be a bit of a bit of awkwardness given given the fact that one of the people involved is a prosecutor. <laughs> um. And. If, if it's, if it's, if it sound if if you're visual if you're visualizing someone someone like Faye Valentine as our as our confidence woman or someone like Fujiko Mine, no, you're not too far off from what from what I was considering. Yeah, but I'm I'm uh, envisioning the clash between her and and Hikaru as a uh, as Lupat. <laughs> Just as t I'll I'll allow it, <laughs> but event eventually sh eventually she get she gets roped in because a a if pe if people are going to get rewritten like this um then she then she's then she's out of a job because it's kind of it's kind of hard to have marks when they when they ch when they change so suddenly and when they are uh change to a fate that doesn't ever meet her expectations. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it comes to, when it comes to the, now obviously the, obviously the Smith, um, or our Mars in this case, the, the approach that we'd probably, ha the approach that we'd probably have is let, is less on her, dis less on him or her discovering their, per their persona. And more and more and more about explore and more about exploring how 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 is how is it that how is it that this person can be can be uh, can be so aware of everything that's going on, and the, and the whole thing of okay who who the hell who the hell even are you? Yeah. And that's that's when they find that's and through that um, they end up meeting one of the, one of Mars's drivers, who. Who can who kind of explains the situation and um and bas basically that basically that they set they set up a delivery co a delivery company and even even though even though they even though a lot of the a lot of the hiring and and managing is done is done through is on through is on through multiple parties because this person doesn't want to doesn't want to be out in public um, mm -hmm. the employees are the employees are still treated decently. Just Definitely get, not a black company. Yeah, it's just they get they um they get they get deli they get um they get delivery orders a lot a lot of them a lot of them from restaurants. In fact, in fact, a lot of, in fact a lot of in fact having a minor network of of small of small time restaurants that'll that'll work that'll work with Mars. And and some and some and some small time convenience stores or the like. Especially since there's shops of all sizes all, all around the various districts in J in Japan in general and in t and to and Tokyo specifically and even more specifically this particular spot of it. Mm -hmm. So you have so you have pl you have plenty of oppor so there's plenty of opportunities for that kind of networking. Um. But I'd say I'd say I'd say in this case the in this case the. The Mars segment for the for this would be, um, what would be one of their one of their delivery drivers acting a bit off. Mm-hmm. Which which um which ends up which ends up getting the revelation of how they of how they first found out about the loom. Um. And when it comes to Ju when it comes to Jupiter. The approach that the approach that I'm considering is that one is that one of Ju one of Jupiter's students was at, um 
was acting a bit unusual. Given the fact that we established that Ju that Jupiter be being a being a um, Busozoku turned turned um, junior high teacher who cares for their students, um, they would they would know they it would it would they would know very easily if someone wasn't acting the way they usually were. And what's even and would probably be even more frustrating is the fact that. These, the fact that both the student and the parent and the student's friends are acting are acting like it's totally normal, yet in yet in Jupiter's eyes something is off. Oh. Um. And I and that and that that's the that's the jumping point for them to for them to enter the loom and get and and get and get their particular persona. Um, when it comes to, when it comes to our, our Saturn, um, that one's, that one's going to be a bit tricky because, how, because how would we, how would we integrate someone who, someone who just got out of basic? Um, so that's actually a lot easier than you might think. Um, especially if there's been connections between the illicit substances found in the cook, the delivery drivers, and where they delivery to mm -hmm. d deliver to. Mm -hmm. There's a very local JSDF uh, um, base that probably receives pretty normal uh, deliveries for you know various members who are stationed there on the daily. So it'd be it'd be a bit of it'd be a bit of a drive from. It'd be a bit of a a drive from from the from the main hubs. Yeah, but they're also one of the last characters we will connect with. Mm -hmm. uh, given that, given that, I'd say, I'd I'd say that um, that they that in their case they in their case they they um. It's they found they found out that one one person who. During basic was th was thinking of quit was thinking of um, quitting, all of a sudden, didn't, and and act, and acting like they never planned on quitting to begin with. Yeah, why well, do that, guys? That sounds dumb. Mm -hmm. And and that that's that's where that's where the that's where the um twit I'd that's where the re that's where the um rewrite investigation team comes in. Which is which would would be would be the business name of this particular group? <laughs> um, I mean, none of the groups have had to like. I'm using that. On, I'm using that in an unofficial sense. The only one that had the only two groups, the only um two um, parties in the series that have had an official name for their group were um were persona th were in persona three and five. Yeah. Three with C's and five with the Phantom Thieves of Hearts, which wasn't even their name in Japanese. They were just called the Phantom Thieves. There, mm -hmm. I get the I get the feeling adding the of Hearts was a was a means of was a was a means of trying to dodge potential legalese. That and the idea of a Phantom Thief is a uh, is pretty broad. Mm -hmm. But, ah, eh, but that that I th that I think would cover, would cover would cover our spring season, um, and th and throughout all this, just just a just developing a bit of, a bit of an understanding, essentially, um, setting the groundwork for everything that comes everything that comes afterwards, um. Now our our summer, our our summer entry. Um, would be development. I'd say this. I'd say this is when you, this is where we start to, start to get into more of the story of of the of the characters involved. Um, yeah. I I e get get a get a li get a little bit of their of their particular pasts. As w with the exception, of course, of Sora, because we because of how this series works. Um. 
I would there will also be the, the normal um, social link slash confidant building where you'll do side quests and stuff dealing with yeah, those people. Yeah, but uh, like, we, like we said, if we, if we were to... Ch even if we tried to, even if we tried to build social links through the normal setup, that would be pushing things a little bit. Would um, be pushing things a lot. Yeah, and do, doing it with the amount of um, fortunes, that's that's quite a, that is going that is quite an ask. That is one of those things I'd have to spend a week. I'd have to spend a week just writing that out on my own. That's a that is not feasible for this exercise. Mm-hmm. But I'd say I'd say I'd say the culmination of of um develop well, of of development is is the is the is essentially the further establishing of of the of these eight people as instead instead of being a bunch of individuals as a as a group of individuals working to working together i.e. Yeah. They, they start to develop a bit of a cohesion. <laughs> As te as tempting as it is to have ev to have everybody sh have almost everybody shack up at um at Masa's place, I'm not I'm not going with that. No, they'll meet they'll meet at a at a maid cafe in Akihabara since uh that's where the protagonist is now working as a new one as a line cook. Yeah, and you we can and you can probably have it that they ha that because they've picked up a bunch of things here and there. Although they don't follow recipes, they're actually a good cook. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's one of the few times that Mars will come out of their actual apartment is the when they go into one of the deep corner booths of a specific maid cafe. Mm -hmm. And the only reason Mars says it's okay is because no cameras pointing here. The, the Wi-Fi is far enough away that nobody can grab my stuff. We're good. Mm -hmm. oh, I wouldn't be surprised if if Mars if Mars walked into the. Either walked into the place or walked in through the ba walked in through the back, and um, and that's when and in <laughs> enough enough um enough ho enough hoods and sc enough hoods and scarves to make them look like somebody walking around in my neck of the woods in January. That and the fact that uh, much like Comey and Comey son can't communicate, they're very very quickly walking and doing nothing but walking. Mm hmm. Until they get to their destination, which incidentally, um, Netflix, fuck you. You mean the fact that they don't translate every sign like they probably should? Yeah. Especially considering the entire point of Komi San can't communicate is the fact that she can't fucking talk. <sighs> I don't remember. I don't remember if it's a case where she where she literally can't talk or she she's she's, just, she's psychologically just incapable. Sign. Yeah, but not She's... but not physically incapable. No, she can make sounds and she talks to herself at some points in the series, but uh, she's 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 psychologically incapable of saying more than like two syllables to anybody. Mm -hmm. But be that as it may, back on the rails. Yeah, back on back on the rails. <laughs> um, um, this is this is where you can ha this is where you can have the gag of um. Of Mar of Mars taking off a bunch taking off a bunch of stuff and re and revealing, and re and revealing that the that the person behind it is, wait, wait the person behind the person the the person under all under all those roads who was bossing us around all this time is it is a, it is, is this cute? <laughs> yeah, and um. As part of this development, though, I think that there's going to be a building thread understanding more about how the loom and fate work as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and on top of all that, uh, there's going to be this sense of urgency coming from Igor. Because I think that the ultimate culmination of, of the summer um, season is... Uh, you get summoned to the velvet room one night in, in your sleep, mm -hmm. and Igor says, you've been doing very well to pull and break all the chains you can. It's now time to show you why that's the case. And uh, we get an introduction to, to both uh, Philemon and Nyarlathotep at the same yeah. time. And it, would you would you have it th would you have it that both of them are both of them are sitting in the velvet room themselves? Uh, I would have it that they're that they're revealed in the Velvet Room. Mm -hmm. I Igor, Igor, and uh, 
and um, Sora are sitting together talking uh, in the rows, and um, spotlights from the rest of the planetarium, since it is a planetarium, mm -hmm. uh, slowly glow up to show that Philemon and Niralathotep have been sitting in the shadows uh, in the back of the planetarium the entire time. Mm -hmm. Like, they've always been there. Um, feel the when it comes to how I'd ha how I'd interpret Philemon and um, and Yarlathotep looking, um, Philemon, I'd I'd say, I'd say look, I'd say looks like it looks like someone going to a masquerade ball just wearing a butterfly mask. Uh, I can see that. Mm -hmm. That um, I mean, Philemon has been a beautiful person with a butterfly mask that's somewhat androgynous. Mm -hmm. Um. In most of their appearances. Now, as far as Nyarlathotep, I would I wouldn't do the the I know it's tempting to do the whole to do the whole te to do the whole tentacle thing, but I feel like that's a little bit too easy. It's also uh, overrated. Yeah. I would I would probably I would prob um give I would probably I would probably have there's a there's a couple approaches like. One is one is them is them dr them dressing as the harlot a, a la um, Persona for, Persona Five Imagining Project. The other possibility is th is them look is them looking uh, looking a bit a bit more. I don't know I don't know like it like a so the, dressing it dressing in a suit that is that looks like. Looks like the looks like the looks like the suit that Tom Baker had during his run in the Doctor. Um, I actually see Nyarlathotep trying to, um, as much as they are the crawling chaos, as much as they are counting on humanity destroying itself. Uh, I see this particular version of Nyarlathotep knowing that they have to, um, encourage a. A human to choose the fate of total destruction, as it were. I think that they would take a more business-like approach, um, rather than a suit like Tom Baker's, because Tom Baker's was a little more colorful than I would give Nyarlathotep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm thinking uh, creams and charcoal grays, maybe a black tie. Black tie, pro probably, probably a scarf as well. Yeah, and the, the scarf would likely be a, a, another gray. Mm -hmm. um, things that suggest a, a sense of dreariness and mystery without a sense of outright malice. In that regard, I'd, prob I'd probably have Nyarlath I'd, pr I'd probably have Nyarlathotep um, wear wearing a wearing a pair of aviators. <laughs> that that would work. Um, I should think that if we have the in, inner portraits on uh, certain text boxes, anytime he gets a little overexcited and, and threatening, uh, the normal teeth ha that he has kind of go a little jagged demony teeth, mm -hmm. and he gets a, b a bit of a slasher. Bit of a bit of a Glasgow smile or something like that. Yeah, he's just like. <laughs> Um, and we, not, not that Philemon doesn't get away with it, their own creepy ass smirks. Mm -hmm. But I, but obviously, obviously, is at this point that the that the wager is revealed of um, that Fi, that Philemon and Nyarlathotep have have had for the longest time and are and are and are renewing. Or rather, um, coming back together again to see its ultimate conclusion, mm -hmm. because they've determined that this is about the time it should occur. Yeah, and uh, and so the, the 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 wager of does humanity become more than it is, or does humanity destroy itself, is revealed. Mm -hmm. And I think I think in this situation, Igor would probably give a hint of as as for me. I've been I've been assi I've been assigned as the new as the arbiter in this in this little game. Yep. At le at least the at least uh, at least that's that's what my that's what my contract states. Mm -hmm. 
but the t- <laughs> or something along the lines of, but the terms of my arbitration are at my discretion. Basically, some basically some kind of hint that while he while he is, while he is while he is meant while he is meant to be the neutral party judging the, judging this uh, ju- this little wager, that doesn't mean he has his own agenda, or that he yeah, doesn't have his own agenda. Sorry, yeah, the negative. yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean that he isn't also working his own angle. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd say I'd say that would be the culmination of the. Of the um, summer season, um, then is autumn. Yeah, which I'd autumn would be uh, in the Kisho Tenketsu. Autumn would be our twist moment. So autumn is going to be, um, you know, we're we're going into more of the layers of the loom. Mm-hmm. We're finding weirder and weirder threads. First of all. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Threads are getting a little more esoteric and a little less uh, concrete now that we're going higher and higher outside of fate. But it's also getting much, much harder. Yeah. And I think the twist, as it were, should be that the loom uh, is jointly designed uh, by Nyarlathotep and uh, Philemon as part of the wager. Mm-hmm. That fate itself was both of them working together, and ultimately they just want to see which fate humanity chooses. I would I would say that that would this be a, would this be a good opportunity to um to re- to reveal the me- the mechanics of the mechanics of how someone becomes a rewrite. Yeah, definitely. The way the way I see it is that is someone who someone who becomes a rewrite is someone who pushed a, pushed a bit too much against against their determ against their determined fate, and the and the um the loom rec- the loom recoils and t- and tightens it and tightens itself around them. They get pulled they get pulled into the loom they get ch- they get chained up, and the, and the and are essentially are essentially um. Essentially, have their have their fate more tightly constrained around them. Uh-huh. Um, whereas, whereas our whereas our persona users um, found a way found a way to fight back. Yeah, they could they could they couldn't be they couldn't be contained within their fate. And I'd. I would I would say that um that just for just for a glimpse they end up they end up they end up get they end up um discovering how discovering how to see pe- how to see people's fates when they when they're just when they're just walking about. Yeah, they eventually discover how to how to see their fates and see how close the loom uh encroaches upon them. Mm-hmm. They'll even be able to see how the rewrites are no longer covered in thread, but are covered in chain. Mm-hmm. Um, Which, of, of course, is going to scare the hell out of some of them. Yeah. And no, and knowing knowing how knowing that, I think that I think the at the end of, at the end of the autumn season, there is there is another conversation with. With with Igor with um Igor, that that being that being that the the fi- the final the final moves are about to begin, and 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 you and you and you you and your friends will be the, will be the mo- will be the most impo- the most important piece on this proverbial game of chess. Yeah. And I'd say, I'd say, in, I'd say in this in this regard, that brings us to the winter part of it, where where ev- where first first off, um, the the re- the rewrite effect is get is getting mo- is getting more aggressive, and people are, and people are starting to no- to notice uh, to notice these rewrites happening more often. The um and then the main characters because they can see the threads of fate, 
uh, on uh, even in the real world now, um, they notice that it's happening to people who are uh, all, who are less constrained by their fates than others. Like mm-hmm. they they saw that there was a clear threshold prior, and that threshold has been getting lower and lower as time goes on. Yeah. Uh, and obvious, obviously, with this kind of thing, things are things are getting far, things are getting far more tense. And even even within the party, there's the there's the discussion about what about whether or not whether whether or not they've whether or not they've been doing the right thing throughout throughout all this fighting. Yeah, because a lot of the people who succumb to their fates seem happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the ultimate lesson is that is that the ha- is that this particular happiness is false. Pretending to be happy isn't the same thing as actually being happy. Yeah. Uh, and I'd I'd say I'd say if there's one person who who ends up go, who ends up going into that particular rant, it'd probably be our Jupiter. Yeah. As as somebody as somebody who who um as just draw, just drawing upon their experiences just, just drawing upon their experiences and be and. Well, the reason they be the reason they be they joined a, they joined a motorcycle gang in the first place was because they was because they didn't want to be tied down. Yeah, and uh, I think um, another person who would who would really get in on this actually would be would be our uh, our big sis, our son mm-hmm. uh, Hikaru herself, mm-hmm. because as a prosecutor, she's going to say forcing someone to do something. When they haven't broken any laws, is just as bad as not enforcing the law in the first place, mm-hmm. and it doesn't lead to any um, restoration of order or safety, and it doesn't lead to any uh, any repayment from the 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 vic- any repayment to the victim from the uh, perpetrator of a crime either, mm-hmm. and. I'd would say with I'd say when, once that resolve happens, there's one, one fi- one final pu- one final push. Into 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 the hi- into the highest layer of, of the, of the loom, basic and basically seeing, seeing the seeing the mecha- seeing the mechanism that spins the threads itself. Okay, well, and then, the the, uh, the real question here becomes. Um, what's going to be our false end, and how are we going to resolve it to the true end? Because that's that's been a big thing uh, since four. I would I would say I would say our I would say our false end is that's a, that's actually a bit tricky because we ca- we kind of are, we kind of already did a false end with that Morpheus question early on. It's uh. I guess, but the the false end is going to involve choosing fate at all, mm-hmm. and uh, the I guess the the best way to say it would be that um, if we the, the implication has been that if they don't choose fate, uh, destruction is guaranteed, or at least that's how uh, Nyarlathotep and Philemon have have misled them i have i have a bit of an idea at the um at the at the at what at what would appear to be the final boss against well fate Mm -hmm. um if you if you fight it and beat it like if you that first phase if you fight it and beat it like a normal boss fight um all all that you've all that you've done is is repl- is replace what is replace one mechanism with another? Okay, so rather than treating uh, treating the cause, you're treating a symptom. Yeah, and the, and ba- basically, basically the two of them deci- basically Philemon and Nyarlathotep decide to just start to de- decide to just start the wager all over again from square one. Mm-hmm. Whereas, whereas. The, but the key thing is is that eh, is that once it reaches a certain threshold, you utilize one me- one mechanic that would that would be unthinkable at this point. Dueling. Yep, 
you cha you challenge fate to a duel which is how you unlock the which is how you unlock the second phase essentially essentially this is this is where um this is where you, you would think you would think that challenging fate to a duel would be would be impossible and this is where Igor reve reveals his hand you think that challenging fate would not just be a, or challenging fate to a duel would not just be impossible but suicidal mm -hmm. the rest of the uh, group is going to freak the fuck out when you first try to take uh, take the choice mm -hmm. and you're going to get a second prompt are you sure you really want to challenge fate to a duel mm -hmm. <laughs> and of, of course of course in this the answer is yes because if I, because if i if i the idea that we're going with is that if you de if you destroy f if you destroy fate all you're destroying is a all you just are you destroying is the is a is fate in the form of an obstacle but fi but fate will continue to exist it's the di it's the difference between um it's the difference between w between beating somebody and winning <laughs> God damn it! You deserve that. <clears throat> yes, I, yes, I do. But the the approach the approach is that the ch the challenge the challenge is for the challenge is for e for every every single ch every single chain. Th that is that is that is that is ever that is ever, that is ever, exi that is ever existed and for e mm -hmm. and for and bas basically to dis basically the wager is the is the veil that keeps people from seeing th that keeps people from seeing their fates yeah um and one and one with one with and one would think that one would think that this would be impossible that fate would that fate would refuse such a such a wager and this is where this is where igor make again makes it makes his makes his threat makes his threshold by sim by sim because of the fact that well you know how it is with demons and contracts you got to read the fine print they say the devil is in the details and that's when he that's when he re, that's when he reveals the contract that Nyarlathotep and Philemon signed signed all those all those years ago Bas basically basically saying that if basically saying that if if anyone if anyone managed to conf, managed to confront fate that they that they that they would be considered a that they would be considered a participant mm -hmm. i e he, i.e., the whole time Igor was Igor was waiting for somebody to to get to this level, to con to confront to confront fate in to confront fate directly, in in order in order to in order to invoke this clause. Because Igor is sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. Of course, of course, of course. Some um, the the question of how of how file of how. Um, Philemon and you know, it could be ar the argument could be made that Igor, that Igor had li that Igor had lied to bo to both of them when it came to the contract that that all three parties signed. The approach that I'm going with this is that they is that there were no lies stated, but both of them but both of them were so dead set in the in the way they particularly saw things that they that they were never that they weren't looking at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Igor, somebody who has seen and f and and try and tried to foster mankind's development for God knows how long, knew knew that all he had to do was bide his time, and somebody and somebody would ma would um make their appearance that would f that would fit that would fit his parameters, and then he could make his move. Um, yeah. In other in other words, Philemon and Nyarlathotep were playing. We're pl we're we're playing the short game. Igor was playing the long game. Yep. Although Igor nearly got taken out in the long game by Yaldabaoth, which was something he hadn't foreseen. Mm -hmm. Which, which, <laughs> but I I I feel I feel like doing I feel like doing this would 
would best would best establish that you essentially have you essentially have three quote unquote master manipulators. It's just that it's just that one of them knew knew that all knew the right level of subtlety to to make things work in his favor. Yeah. Um. And because and because of that, he because of that the um Philemon and Nyarlathotep have no choice but to agree. Other otherwise otherwise they'd end up they'd end up breaking the they'd end up breaking the vow and breaking the vow, break annulling the contract, and thus and and thus end up um remove thus end up removing fate entirely. Which is not preferable for their desires. Mm hmm. Um, and be. I will. I will note that it that within this, I am kind. I am kind of setting up. I am kind of setting up the both of them as a reincarnation of the law and chaos humanity dichotomy from Shin Megami Tensei. Mm hmm. And the way I, the way I see the way I see it in this. This is this would essentially be the second phase, um, of of the of the essentially f essential fight against fate. But because and because of the fact that it's f that it's essentially fighting fate as an equal. By this point, they're they're on the cusp of crossing the threshold between completely sh between between um ha between having some threads of fate attached to them and completely shattering all. Fate attached, mm. and in and as te I am very tempted to to bring up that this is that this is where they end up getting the universe arcana. Is a, th a theme that a theme that I a theme that I kind of want to go with with the um with. Um, so with so, with the social with the social link um, confidant equivalents, mm -hmm. is help is helping people get a new is helping people get a new start. They're they're in some they're in some kind of dead they're in some kind of dead end in the in their particular arc, but the protagonist helps them either get a new start or a new outlook. Okay. And. In, though instead of instead of the universe arcana, I'm going I'm going with the heavens fortune. Okay. Since the num the val the number of value on the heavens fortune is um, is infinite, and the and its meanings are supposed to be either possibility or paradox. Which both go into breaking fate. Mm-hmm. And. I w I'm v I was t I was tempted to use to have to use B to use Bishamon's um um Buddhist name for this, but I th I think I think I think that the protagonist's true persona in the, in this in this state should be possibly something like Atma. Um. Let me. There's a specific There's a specific uh, Ashira named named Ashira that I uh, think would be better. What do you have? He's he's a Vimala Sitra in Sanskrit mm -hmm. or Vema Sitra. Um, could you could you write that could you write that could you write that down in the chat? Um, this is this is an Ashida who fought against everything, including being an Ashida. So, again, the whole fighting against fate thing. Um, as we all know, Shuda in Buddhism are beings that do nothing but fight have fall have fallen from the path of Buddha and. Weren't they also? Least, weren't they also clo the? Um, extremely close, extremely close to, to get to reach to reaching Buddhahood, but um, but their but their fixation on violence held held them back from yes. crossing that threshold. Yes. Um. 
but there's a a king of the Ashura, mm-hmm. um, and Vima Lasitra is one of them, and that one is the uh, the Vima, Vima Lasitra is, is commonly the the Ashura that fought against being Shura and in fact following Buddha altogether to fi- try and find his own way into um, outside of the cycle of samsara. Mm-hmm. But event, but eventually, eventually, when it comes when it comes to this when it comes to this last phase, um, the party does the party does end up winning. And the and in the process of in the process of that, that's when that's when the final choice is, is made. Because the the option is um, is is ascend is ascend past fate or or. Or destruction. A la, a la cho- choose e- choose either either Phil- either Philemon or um or Narlathotep's side, and of course the final the final answer is dis- is the dis- is the destruction of fate. Yeah, releasing yourself from the cycle of samsara. Mm-hmm. But. For but for these kind but for these kind of things there is there is there is a there is a cost and the on, the only one who the only one who's willing to who's willing to pay it is the protagonist. It's not it's not a is we're, I'm not doing a thing like say three where he ends up beco- where where um he ends up becoming the seal that's ki- that's keeping Nyx at bay. Um, the the approach it the approach is. Something, something more along the lines of the ending of of Digital Devil Saga. Um. Of the of, or ac- actually, that's a that's a bad comparison given given the, given some of the themes in that game. Yeah, I was about to say. I but the the approach is that is that, the the protagonist, choose, chooses to complete chooses to completely remove. Remove the veil that keeps people from from seeing their fate, essentially gi- essentially giving the people the adv- the ability to ch- to choose it themselves, instead of ha- instead of having it put upon them by the loom. Yeah, and true self determination. Yeah, the co- the co- the cost is that, well, f- is that all is that the ch- is that while there is that all of all of their. Ch- all of their chains, di- all their chains disappear. But the but the bigger the bigger cost I'd say is the fact that Sora has has become has become a has become a concept. Mm-hmm. I I e he, I e he was the one who t- he was the one who who went over the went over the final threshold the. But because of the because of the fact that he's he's on that same because of the because of the effect of the of that contract since he's considered a participant and essentially the person who won the won the eternal stalemate, um, he is he is no he is no longer what could be considered human. Mm-hmm. Well, he, of course not. the The entire idea of uh, ascending past fate and and leaving the cycle of samsara is that you've enlightened yourself beyond humanity. Mm-hmm. Um, Sora would likely cease to be, at least in in the in the human world. Much like how uh, Philemon and and uh, Nyarlathotep exist as beings outside of time and space, so too would Sora eventually become like that. Yeah. Essentially, essentially, Sora, beco- Sora becomes the the thir- the third the third in the third indivi- the third individual in the in oppos- opposite um, opposite Philemon and Nyarlathotep, uh-huh. which ultimate ulti- and I'd say the, I'd say the role that Sora would have in this instance is um is canceling those two out. Mm-hmm. Any time, any time that they, any time that they would, that they would pull someone to one extreme or the other, 
um, Sora would tr Sora would pull back. And wh while while the rest of the party and is is is, a is able to is able to go about their normal lives, they're the, they're the only they're the only people who still who still remember Sora. Uh huh. So, I'd say I'd say the final capstone is that is that even even is that they is that they were able to they're able to get they're able to make a make a makeshift makeshift shrine to to him a sort of shrine to him yeah a sort a sort a sort of a sort of shrine to a sort of shrine to rem to remember him i don't want to do as tempting as it would be to do the monica rounds of of um no, of nobody of nobody remembers sora i don't want i don't want to do i don't want to do that okay But I, but I would go. I would go with the idea that's that um. Sora still Sora still makes up makes appearances, quote unquote. But it's in, but it's in, it's in it's in people who you who you might see and that who you might see they might have they might have a nice word or two and then, you completely forget about them. So someone whose face just f fades into the crowd. Yeah. There. Okay. Were, um, and I'd I'd say I'd say that I'd say that would be that's an that's an effective route for the, for this particular experiment. Someone who so, someone who's someone who's breaking fate's chains, achieve, achieves achieves enlightenment, grants and grants free and grants freedom. For hum essentially for humanity to choose their own fates. And is it is there a, is there a possibility that you'll ha that you'll still have people fall falling back into tribes? Yeah, but it'll be people who choose that. Yeah, it'll be their choice that leads to that rather than the fate assigned to them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I think that is as good a spot as any to to put a to put a capstone on this particular experiment that ended up go that ended up being one of our longer episodes. Yep. <laughs> but it can't. I kind of knew it was going to be a long one from from the get go. Um. So. I do have I do have a few I do have a few interviews coming up, and on Tuesday, there will be a bit of catch up. Since uh, since on that d on that day we'll be d we'll be delving into something that we had planned on do something that we had planned on doing earlier on in the month, but I ended up having a bit of a health issue, so I couldn't do it. But it'll still count as a numbered entry. It'll just be not in the original order that I planned. Yeah. So, with all with all that said, I'd like I'd like I'd. I'd like to sincerely thank everybody who took who took the time to listen to this four-hour show, and we'll be back here. Ne we'll be back here fair in the near future with an with another venture with another venture, at, right here in the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs>